Dana White. We've seen him slap the shit out of his wife gotcha. on video. It wasn't like Jonathan Majors where, like, we got this part on video, but not that. And then right. she fell, and then she was drunk, and then she's crazy. You saw it was Dana White. Mm -hmm. You saw his wife. You mm -hmm. saw her get handsy, and you saw him smack the shit out of her. Wow. For about two, three, four days, maybe, he's the worst person in the world. Now I see him in interviews and podcasts every two days. That's okay. No problem. See, he's Dana White. <laughs> no pun I was, intended. I was gonna say. I was gonna say. So, uh, what's the real difference here? Yeah, because he's Dana White, <laughs> and it's not, you know, Jonathan White. It's Jonathan Majors. <laughs> <laughs>
if that makes any sense. And that makes perfect sense to sure. me. Sure. Because he, I, I, and I, I would probably agree with that right. for the most part. He, I mean, he looked, he played Bruce Wayne great. Mm -hmm. And I think with Tom Hardy, his venom is entertaining and good. Mm -hmm. His Eddie Brock really sucks. Right. It, especially the way he looks in, in his last <laughs> one. It's like, dude, they just scraped somebody off the street, right. dude. Come on. I mean, I understand, out. I understand he's a little rough around the edges, but sure. I mean, come on, dude. Yep. I, I, it, it was bad. It was. Now, Tom Hardy said something, uh, I think about a week ago, mm -hmm. and I guess the internet, you know, we, they don't know how to take it. He said that, <laughs> yeah, he goes, Spider-Man has gone to Feige's camp, and he's talking about Tom Holland, right? right. He's, he's in Feige's camp, meaning mm -hmm. he's in the MCU. He goes, but we have one at Sony. Now, is he saying that? They have an actual Spider-Man at Sony, or are they, or or is he saying that we have a Spider-Man level of character at Sony and Venom? W which one? Which one do you think he means here? Um, well, I mean, whatever he says uh, is irrelevant, but <laughs> um, I, I'm assuming he means because they don't have an actual Spider-Man, right. they have a spider-like presence, or they have so Venom is on the coattail of Spider-Man, mm. so. When the coattail starts to think that they're the coat, we have a whole different thing. Right. Like which that. which is why what he's saying is nonsensical. But yeah. if he, I'm assuming he means we have a spider-like presence, not an actual spider. -Man. Right. Well, here's the full quote. He says, people were going to judge us, you know. Marvel Universe under Feige's management is doing so well. Spider-Man has gone to Feige's camp at Marvel. We have one to me and Kelly. I think Kelly's the one writing the movie. It's so important to pour in everything that we can to build on that opportunity. So by the third one now, Kelly is directing it. She's writing, I'm attached to it at the hip and shoulder, like whatever you need, we'll figure it out. So it does sound like he's saying like mm. a Spider-Man level character as far as the movies go. Sure, sure, sure. Which, I mean, you know, I'm not going to pull up the box office, but I'm assuming that that's not the case with right. the Venom movies. Well, the other thing is that I, I, I agree with part of his statement. I be, as an actor, yeah. he has more than enough right and, and leeway to talk about his involvement in the portrayal of a character character sure. and his involvement in a movie. Yep. But the overarching statement, we have our own Spider-Man, that's a director's thing. Mm. That should, that's something that should be said by like a director level person, not right. by, unless of, of course he secretly, you know, has like a major interest deal or stock, you know, thing in, in, the, in Sony. Maybe. I, I, I don't know, <laughs> but for him, it just seems weird to me Yeah. for him to say, we have our own Spider-Man. Like he's talking for the studio. Correct. Correct. Well, I, now he kind of went on to talk about how much influence he's had in this movie. Oh, so okay. I guess they, they allowed him and the director to have a, a lot more creative influence in this. So maybe feel some type of ownership. I, Sometimes that's not a good thing, though. Right. You get a, you know, an actor, you know, and then, you know, I'm not saying actors should only act, mm. but sometimes, you know, you see them influence the movie too much. Right. I think like, you know, Vin Diesel and Fast and Furious, possibly right. a little bit. Uh, possibly right? a little bit. Um, you know, so may maybe there's some of that going on here. Mm. But, you know, now what, we'll play a little game of what if. What if okay. he, they did have their own Spider-Man? Now, there's three Spider-Man actors already. Mm -hmm. You got Tom Holland, who we know that's the MCU's. Right. We saw Garfield and, and McGuire come back in mm -hmm. No Way Home. Those are certainly Sony characters. Mm -hmm. Now, this Venom movie also takes place in, the, I believe, the same shitty universe as Madam Web, possibly. Mm -hmm. Possibly. They alluded to a boy, you know, Peter, being born in that movie. Right. So it, it could there potentially be a new Peter Parker Spider-Man? Or what about... What if they brought Andrew Garfield back and threw him into this universe, or even Tobey Maguire? Mm. How would you feel about that? Um, <clears throat> I, I think it would be confusing. Yeah. Um, unless they spawn it specifically. Um, if the premise was like Earth six one six versus Earth, you know, you know ten nine five, or something like that. Got it. You know, because like in the CW show, um, the Flash, they had a lot of flashes mm. um, come from different um, Earths. Right. And it made sense the way they spun it. Yeah. So I wouldn't be opposed to it. And it would make sense if they did it. Yeah. But, for, <clears throat> but for them to just come up and say, okay, you know, um, MCU, you know, Tom Holland, we're going to do your show over here, you mm. know, in, in, in July. But then we're going to spin off this Sony Spider-Man in September. Right. I, I think it'd be confusing. You know what? If it doesn't happen, 
I, I would, I, I guess I would critique the post credit scene in No Way Home much worse because they tease this. Right. We saw Eddie Brock, Tom ha- or Tom Hardy, at the end of that movie in a bar mm-hmm. in the Spider Man or in Tom Holland's universe. He mm-hmm. sees Spider Man in New York City, the whole deal, mm-hmm. and then he goes back to his universe, mm-hmm. and a little piece of the Venom symbiote stays here. So if that never shows up again, or if we were to never see Tom Holland and Tom Hardy cross, I feel like that moment was wasted. Mm. Why tease that if you're not going to deliver? I, at this point, I, I don't, I don't even know how to respond at this point because <laughs> it's just like, it's like <clears throat> they're trying to, you know, um, you know, I, who, who, who has the bigger dick right at, at this point. Yeah. And it's like, it just, they're going to continue this war. Mm. I saw some show about uh, like warring neighbors or something like that. It just escalates, <laughs> escalates. And it starts out as something stupid and it escalates into something, <clears throat> somebody getting shot or killed or something like that. It's like, I have the rights to do something. So I'm going to do it to the max. Well, you right. have the rights to do something. So I'm going to do it to the yeah. max. So forget about all the casualties. Mm-hmm. Forget about the fans, which is who's actually making you, Paying you to make this stuff, correct? And then you're creating all this conflict, and it's not good. Mm. You know, this isn't a reality show, right? Yeah, you know, so, right. but whatever. So, do you think we? And I say we like us, the fans. Uh-huh. We would be better off if Sony would stop their stupid little universe they made and give the rights to Spider-Man back to Marvel Studios, MCU, and let them fully take over Spider-Man. Yes, yeah. I do. It'd be better for us. Yes. But to your point, it is. It's the studio mm-hmm. going, like, the only reason we have these Venom movies is Sony would lose the Spider-Man license if they didn't release a Spider-Man movie. I think it's every two or three years. Right. That's why we had Madam Web. That's uh. why we had Morbius. That's why we had all this shit, because they don't want to lose the license. But you're doing shit with the license. Right. Give it back. How, because Because you can't do a good movie... Why don't you give it to somebody that's going to do a great movie right. and the cut that you would get out of it would exceed sure. what you go, what you make back in profits with your shitty movie. Mm-hmm. Minus all the headache, the expense, all that stuff. Yep. I'm, yep. I'm just saying. Now, you saw the Venom trailer. Yes. What do you think? You think it's going to be a good movie? Mm, I, <laughs> I, I think it will be along the same lines as the rest of the movie. Okay. It looks Pretty, you know, entertaining. Yeah. I, I do feel like um, I've seen the whole movie just yeah. from the trailer. Um, and when they do that, that typically means that the movie is not going to be that good. Right. Um, so I am going to put it in the same camp as the rest of the Venom movies. Mm. And I'm not going to say it's going to be a great movie or even a good movie. Right. I think it's just going to be comparable with the previous ones. Got it. Yeah. Yeah. I, I feel like it... <laughs> Just based off of what we've seen so far and just trends in movies, and I would be shocked if it's not worse than the first two. <laughs> like, I, I think that when it's all said and done, I agree with you. I think it will f- fit the Venom movies. It will be entertaining. Right. It will be funny. Right. There will be a lot of nonsensical bullshit, right? Mm-hmm. Like, you say badly entertaining? Right. I think it will be badly entertaining, mm-hmm. but I think that when it's all said and done, the first Venom movie will be the best. The second one will be the second best, mm-hmm. and the third will be like, why did we make this? Right, I believe. Well, I mean, Prediction. they got they got to fill a quota, right? They exactly. got they got to produce something every two years yep. or whatever, or they're gonna lose the license. So therefore, yeah, they put out this shit. Well, shit, they're doubling down. Do we have Madam Web? We had this Craven the Hunters coming up soon, mm. which I I mean, we've not seen a lot about that movie mm-hmm. since that that first little teaser trailer, right? I think that will be an entertaining movie. If they just okay, so if you split everything up, give the rights back. Sony give the rights back to um, you know uh, Feige and yep. Camp, and and let them do the major stuff. There's plenty of room for them to do the Craven hunt, uh, um, the Cravens, the um, uh, the Venoms, the Morbius, and all this other kind of stuff. Because I think there's a, there's definitely a place for those B list or C list characters. So they can even do that and do that well, not with the intent um, or, or, or the malice of I'm going to create a Spider-Man replacement. Right. Just like, you know, when you, you have the, the movies, right, the, the live action movies, but then you have the animated universe. You know, the animated universe isn't trying to replace the, the live action 
they, this right. it's a different spin. So Sony can be very good in a niche market, right? Yep. Doing these B list, C list characters, they can put them out a lot more, a lot faster, right? Which is what they appear to be trying to do, mm -hmm. um, and still make you know a ton of money, correct? Without all the conflict, unless they think that. You know, like a reality show, conflict is what's <laughs> driving yeah. attention to them, no, which it is not. I promise you it's not, dude. And like, I have I have a perfect solution. I'm going to be the problem solver here, Adrian. Okay? Let's do it. I'm going to be the, the – not the negotiator. I, I'm going to be like – like, you know, when state comes in, when you got some messed up shit going and, around your house, and they, they mediate, I'm going to be the mediator. All right. That's what I'm going to be. All right. Okay. Like someone's getting divorced. Or, like you, you see, you saw Wedding Crashers, great sure. movie, you know, yep. they're dividing up the miles, the whole deal. I'm yeah, going to yeah. be that. So we're well, going to pretend that Sony and, and Marvel are getting divorced. Okay. The perfect solution. Live action, Sony, live action Spider-Man rights go to Feige and the MCU. Mm -hmm. Okay. The animated rights stay at Sony. Let them keep cooking up the, the animated universe, like mm -hmm. Beyond the Spider Verse, and, right. and do more of that. Yeah. And then we went out. The kids, we went out. It's like right. we get two Christmases, mm -hmm. right? You got the animated stuff, which sure. Sony's been knocking out of the park with. Mm -hmm. The live action with MCU has been beating the shit out of Sony at mm -hmm. for years. Right. We separate those two pieces. Everybody wins out. Everybody's happy. There you go. Uh, that works for me, right? That works I, for me. I'm in. Let's yeah. do it. Yep. All right, get um. Hey, get one of you guys get Feige on the line, and um, we'll we'll fix this whole thing. So, <laughs> so this is what we do here in Only Comics. We get we give gifts. Right. We solve problems. That's it. We, now we mediate. Wow. Wow. Look at that. I mean, we should get. I mean, somebody sent us something. Exactly. You dude. know, <laughs> box of jo a cup of water, maybe <laughs> something, dude. <laughs> Jesus. All right, moving on. DC, yo, DC is in the news this week. Oh, uh, okay. I also heard a rumor, Adrian. What's that? Is, is the hidden gem from DC this week? Uh, Could that be true? To be experienced. Wow, we will find out later, dude. <laughs> I, I heard a little, I'm like, I can't believe this. So, um, James Gunn has pretty much confirmed that Wonder Woman will be recast in the DCU. So, th this is something that I don't know, not, it's not a complete shock to anyone, but um, I think she was the only one... Gal Gadot was the only one that James didn't flat out say I was recasting yet. Uh -huh. So someone asked him on um, <clears throat> Threads, which is like, I think, a Twitter wannabe app. I don't know. Mm -hmm. But anyways, um, the statement was, it's safe to assume Wonder Woman hasn't been cast yet, correct? And then Gunn responded with uh, just a flat out correct. So that would, to me, means that she will be recasted, right? Because right. if she was casted already or if he was going to continue to use Gal right. Gadot, he would not say correct. Mm. I think this is the right decision, and let me not because Gal Gadot was not a great Wonder Woman, mm -hmm. but we're creating a whole new universe here, mm -hmm. whole new line of movies. Let's just erase the entire one before and move on and start fresh. I, sure. I like that idea. How about you? Sure. Um, well, first of all, they undeaded her in um, <laughs> Fast and Furious three thousand and one. That's true. Yeah, she did. So, coming. so she showed up, of course, in the magnanimous, you know, uh, Russian typhoon submarine yep. or something out of nowhere, up, obscene. I mean, that that submarine was the equivalent <laughs> of Magneto dropping the stadium on the White House. Correct. Right? I mean, he, just out of the park kind of. Well, a the only difference is Magneto is a mutant with superpowers. Uh -huh. The the people in Fast and Furious are just regular ass dudes that are like 45, 50 years old. Right. So, anyways. Right. But, but uh, apparently with unlimited resources. <laughs> yes. Right. To get a, oh, come on, it's ridiculous. Right. So, Gal Gadot, she, uh, I, I won't say that she is a miscast. When I originally saw her, she did not fit the bill for me as Wonder Woman at right. all. I mean, we're talking Amazonian, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, so, but she kind of eventually, you know, fit the bill. Um, so she, I would say she is a good Wonder Woman since Linda Carter, mm, right? Okay. Um, the recasting, I think it makes sense. Yep. Um, not only because of this is a whole new universe kind of a deal, but I, again, you know, these people are sunsetting mm. because like, if you look at, um, Hugh Jackman, Hugh Jackman had to be Wolverine off screen for 10, 12 <laughs> right, years, right? right. Yep. His dive was insane. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, constant muscle gain. You have to keep that, at least that physique. There are things that you have to do off camera mm -hmm. in order to be prepared for the next movie and stuff. And I right. think a lot of people uh, just are just done with that. Yeah. And and I think maybe um, even though Gal Gadot probably would have you know went further, I, I think it's probably a good time now to get a proper, more fitting uh, Wonder Woman. Yeah, 
I, I agree. I, I when I first heard that she was casted, I thought you know from a from a look standpoint, she's a lot leaner right. than I would expect for a Wonder Woman. Oh yeah. I mean the face though, I think it sure. really fit the character. So I was like, but to your point, you know, watching her in those movies, I feel like she just embodied that character. Right. She brought it to life and. I, I thought she did a hell of a job. She yep. definitely superseded my expectations. Right. Um, and that was probably one of the upsides of those, you know, really long multiple Justice League movies. You know? <laughs> right. They, I mean, has there ever been a, a bad movie that had that many versions? Like, you know, you had the, the original version, then you had the damn Snyder Cut, which is like five movies in one, then they had the black and white. Like, mm. And it wasn't like an amazing movie, you know? <laughs> um, ca yeah, Captain Marvel. Okay. I mean, they didn't have all the <laughs> renditions, but after, like, you know, the first one, it should have just stopped. I mean, it, it just got bad. It's just watching somebody get, you know, beat too much. It, it's just bad. Yeah, definitely. Um, so, yeah, I, I think this is a good thing, dude. And, and I do think by his response, he means that it will not be Gal Gadot. <clears throat> Why did it be so, like, coy, too? Like, this is about only comics. We're just going to shoot you straight. Right. You're not going to have to guess what we meant. Like, we're just going to shoot you straight. Right. Unlike James Gunn and others. Right. The Crow, dude, we talked about sequels last week, right? Mm -hmm. Our, um, our, matter of fact, our George Lucas clip, I think, was our biggest clip of the week. Everybody <laughs> um, was chiming in. Dude, a lot of people were like, you know, who the hell's George to be talking? Star Wars was a Dune knockoff and all this stuff, mm -hmm. which... Now, here's how I feel. Is George Lucas kind of throwing stones in a glass house with the whole not creative, the guy who's made, like, one movie and multiple sequels? Right. Possibly. But does that mean that he's wrong? You know, like I said last week, I, I partially agree with him. Yeah. Um, you know, which is why I took back the spider thing. <laughs> but um I, yeah, his whole thing he had he's really a one hit wonder. Correct. And he's and he's how do you do it in the music? He had the remixes. Yeah. Right? <laughs> um so he had multiple remixes off of the one hit wonder. Correct. So that's George. Jo so he was original with the Star Wars, but everything after that just made yeah. natural sense. So oh we got 13 main characters we can make a movie about every one of them Correct. and they how to split their lives and blah 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 yep. blah blah so you know whatever and then he had indiana jones yep. but again multiple multiple sequels but my i guess even if that's true what he said it doesn't discount what he said no it, it's what he said was still true right you know so anyway um one of those sequels remember i had the list last week if you didn't see the clip go back and check it out we um there's a whole list of it was 25 movies that have either been released already mm -hmm. this year or will be released that are either a sequel, a third movie, a um, reboot, right? Mm -hmm. One of the remakes is The the Crow. Right. Were you a fan of the original Crow movie? I wouldn't call it a fan, call okay. it being a fan. Um, it was entertaining for the time yep. uh, with uh, Jason Lee, uh, Bruce Lee's son. Yep. yep. Which, you know, obviously uh, also tragically died. Dude, on set, it's, it's, it's like horrible. crazy, yeah. yeah. Um, so... I wasn't, it wasn't a big thing because yep. I didn't follow him. Didn't, I'd never heard of him before then, but I mean, it's a pretty cool character though. Yeah. So I've never actually seen that movie, dude, the original no? Crow. No, no. Is it, is it worth a watch? It's, I think it's like 30 years ago, dude. Yeah. I don't remember. Okay. Maybe we'll, have, maybe we'll review it here. <laughs> the Crow. <laughs> uh, but anyway, I know one movie that I will not be watching though is the remake of The Crow. <laughs> So um, there's there's this guy Cliff Dorfman. I'm sure you don't know who he is. I never. Heard I didn't know who he was. He's an actor, a writer. Now he has a few credits in Hollywood. Mm -hmm. He was in um, a couple TV shows. I think Seventh Heaven, 90210, stuff like that. Ugh. And yeah, he wrote one episode of Entourage, the HBO show. I've never mm -hmm. I've never watched it. Um, and then he is, is that the one with the big haired guy. It's like the whole crew of like Hollywood guys, movie directors, maybe they're like partying. I don't know. I, 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 okay. that's, that, and that's something explained really bad because I never watched it. Okay. They are an entourage. I know that. Oh, you know? Okay. hence the name. Um, he also wrote the movie Warrior. It was like a um, MMA movie with two brothers, and they kind of reconnect. I, I um, gotta forget who was in it, but anyway. Well, there's a there's a there's a Asian movie Warrior, The Warrior, about like set back in like the eighteen hundreds or something. No, like this, this is, is not more, that one. No, this is no. more newer. Um, kind of like uh, like a, a two MMA fighters, I think, are brothers and oh. they reconnect. It came out in twenty eleven. Um, it being a decent or got not the rock reviews. movie about the family thing. No, no, no. Funny thing is, Tom Hardy's in this movie. So oh, there you go. Ah, there you go. Like, how does it relate to comics? Because people are probably like, what the hell are y'all talking about? 
Tom Hardy's in it, and he's uh, in the comic book movie. Yeah, so no, enough said. There you go. Because um, on only comics, we discuss comics and only comics. Uh, sometimes a little something else. Sometimes. <laughs> um, but the crow. So this guy, this this fella here, as they say, um, Chris Dorfman. He tweeted this and then deleted. Tweeted and deleted. But thanks to the internet, uh, we have a screenshot of what he said. He goes, "If hypothetically one happened to see a screening of the Crow movie." which Lionsgate is releasing in August, one might say it's horrible, it's unwatchable, don't waste your money, or can't believe it's so much worse than the original. It is, and don't. He said that. So this guy being in Hollywood wow. got early access to watch this, and the movie was so bad that he felt some type of way, Adrian. Because, I mean, it's got to be pretty bad for him to see it in a private screening and then feel – that he had to go on Twitter mm -hmm. and shit all over this movie. Right <laughs> now, the the one term in here that I want to you know focus on is unwatchable. Now, I I've seen we we've seen bad movies. Yeah, and there are there's typically either the bad movie is like it shouldn't have never been made kind of bad, right? Or there's like elements to it. But this dude, I mean, he just went on a rant about <laughs> pretty much every element of the yes. movie to say that is unwatchable. unwatchable. Wow. Like, have you ever described the movie as unwatchable? I'm close, Captain Marvel. Okay. Um, but not, no. No. I mean, uh, this is going to really piss some people off. But for me, mm -hmm. Dune is unwatchable. Yeah. I mean, I fall asleep yeah. every time, so hence I watch them. In Moon Knight. Moon <laughs> <laughs> But this, I mean. I, and I, Werewolf, Black and White. Uh, you don't, see, I, I thought I was okay. I was I, dude, I started watching. I couldn't. I mean, they took so long in the in the, um, it is maze slow, or something. Yeah. It's like, I, I can't watch this. It dude. is a slow, slow buildup. Um, but, I mean, th this, I wasn't going to see this movie anyways. But I just thought of, I've never seen someone describe a movie as unwatchable. So. Does he still have a job? <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, I don't think he has much of a job, man. He wrote like one movie, wrote one episode of a show, yeah. and starred in some like 90. So I don't even know what he's doing now, if he's still I... considered an actor or writer. Mm -hmm. But um, according to Chris Dorfman, the Crow movie, unwatchable. Wow. And dude, if anyone knows who you are, you cannot tweet and delete. Right. Someone will save it. <laughs> it's yeah. the beauty of the internet, right? Mm -hmm. um, the Boys showrunner Eric. Kripke responds to woke complaints about the boys, and he, he basically says, go watch something else. <laughs> there you go. Um, now, the boys, so th there's, I guess a lot of comic fans love the boys, mm -hmm. I think, right? I mean, it's pretty critically acclaimed show. Um, I've actually, I don't, I've never met someone who said they didn't like the boys, mm -hmm. who's watched it, right? right. Um, there has been some critique for some of its socio-political satire or takes right like sure. um even um when when they showed a lot of like police brutality racial issues um mm -hmm. i think it was in the last season there were some people that kind of critiqued the writer and he basically said like dude it goes on like why this is my perspective these are things that really happened mm -hmm. right <laughs> why would i not include it in my show like that's what i want to do mm -hmm. you know um i mean it's literally the whole line of the uh marvel comics correct you know yeah. Uh, reflecting in comics things that's happened in the social, uh, mm -hmm. political arenas, yep. you know? So, yeah, he actually, he, in the interview, someone, he goes, someone asked me last year about season three, how are you so prescient, I don't even know what that word means, with cops and over-policing in black neighborhoods, and he just says, well, it's been a problem for over 100 years, it was a problem five years ago, and unfortunately it's going to be a problem five years, five years from now, it's always the same shit. Right. So, like, this is happening. Why not include it in my show that takes place in the real world, right, mm -hmm. and mirror what actually happens? So, I, I think the simple answer is that people think are they're trying to push it under the rug. When I, my overall perspective is, if I want to get away from something, I'm offended when somebody else keeps bringing it up, even though we mm -hmm. both know it's still happening. Correct. So, yep. I, it's one of those things. Oh, oh, you still think that way? It's not really happening. Well, yes, it is still right. happening. Yep. And then, um, you know, we, I don't, have you seen the trailer to the um, newest season of The Boys? I have not. So in there, um, we, we see kind of a little glimpse of Homelander going to trial. 
Okay. I mean, I'm assuming it. it's probably for last season when he kills the whole crowd of people, like right, on live TV. Right, I mean, right. I would assume that you probably would go to trial for something like that. I mean, and I'm assuming that he's going to trial for for um, vote. You know, he's like really on um, about uh, the impression of himself. Yes. Right. So he's trying to fix his mm -hmm. um, his his persona right. because there's really no reason for Homelander to be anywhere. Yeah. Under any kind of law. Correct. And so, you know, they asked him about this because of, you know, Donald Trump's on trial. So they're mm -hmm. like, part they're kind of like accusing them, like, are you just like making fun of like recent politics? And his response to sum it up, he's like, no, like we wrote this way in advance. We mm -hmm. didn't know Trump would be on trial when we were releasing this. Like, right. We we wrote this because of what happened in the show. Homelander right. did these things. And, he, and what he said was, um, da, 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 da. he said that, did I know that it was going to come out during Trump's trial? Of course not. But we write what we're either scared of or pissed off about. Some, and then he goes on to ask about you know the over policing. Sure. But he, he talked about how like it, it's going to be cool to look at, you know, can you convict someone that powerful, as powerful as Homelander? Right. Not just from a power set, but he's also from a government where he's at. Right. Can you convict someone that powerful of a crime? And what does that mean for supporters or people protesting him? So it's mm -hmm. just like he's thinking of things that could really happen. Right how would we react to him? And then, Hey, let's show this on screen. Mm -hmm. And then while we're doing that, let's parody comics. And I, dude, I think it's brilliant. Oh, absolutely, dude. I mean, it's like, first of all, people got to understand that it takes a long time to produce a anything. Correct. You know, so they're not sitting around waiting for, it's not Saturday night live. Right. You just can't go <laughs> and like, you know, pull something out of your ass Correct. that happened, you know, 15 minutes ago. Right. So in order for them to produce this show, this has been going on. They have to write it first. Yes. Then they have to go through the production of it first. That's probably two years exactly. alone. Now I do think it's interesting that there's a parallel uh, between Homelander and Trump. Right. You know, uh, two very powerful figures, you know, yep. in their perspective worlds, and it's all playing out at the same time. At the Correct. same time. Now, they have they have said that, um, what's that show? Um, the one that's been on for 400 years. Um, they, they, uh, the, 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 the kid with Simpsons? the... Simpsons? Yeah, the Simpsons yep. have been, have predicted world events. Yeah. You know, so this could be another, you right. know, one of those things. Maybe. But... I don't even want to go down that conspiracy thing. <laughs> is the Simpsons too woke? <laughs> <laughs> um, and then, but this is what I, I really, I don't even know who this dude is. Um, obviously, he's the showrunner. <clears throat> he goes on to say, I clearly have a perspective, and I'm not shy about putting that perspective in the show. Anyone who wants to call the show woke or whatever, that's okay. Go watch something else. Right. There but you I'm go. certainly not going to pull any punches or apologize for what we're doing. Then he talks about how some people think Homelander's a hero. What do you say to that? The show is many things. Subtle is not one of them. Right. Which I, I love him for saying this. Absolutely. Because, I mean, Absolutely. to his point, like, he's not – I mean, Homelander has supporters as well. <laughs> I Absolutely, right? yep. And, you know, you bring the parallels of Trump. I, there's people that are in support. There's people that will be protesting the trial. There's people that are against him. Right. You, you put out any kind of personality, yep. and you're going to have pro and con. It just – just the way it is. Correct. I mean, you got people want to marry serial killers in prison. <laughs> I I mean, it's, it's crazy. Yep. I mean, you got people that like, you know, Superman. I right. mean, come on. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that's probably the worst of all of this, the people who like Superman. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just uh, You're not going to get any feedback I'm on that at kidding. all. Yeah, <laughs> it's only a joke. <laughs> now, but you know what I, I love most about this is, and it kind of, I think it contradicts what Kathleen Kennedy was saying last week. Mm -hmm. About the whole, you know, the all, the the basically the fan base ruins the show. No, I think that there sometimes there is some force representation to where, and not that you have to cater to your audience, mm -hmm. but you should build things that your audience likes. Right. The boys has a fan, a set of fans that mm -hmm. really love this. I think the ones that complain about the woke, they're probably not huge fans of the show. Right. So to his point, if you don't like what I'm putting out, watch a different show. Don't watch the show you don't like and bitch about it. Right, right, right. I don't like country music at mm -hmm. all. Mm -hmm. At all. You were playing a country song the other day. Remember that? Yep. <laughs> I yep. almost fell out of my chair. But <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I like all kinds of music. You do? Hey. Oh, yeah, I do. I do. I don't like every song yep. in every music. Sure. sure. Uh, music genre. Yep. But I like all kinds of music band i do oh, appalachian I like most kinds of music <laughs> i like all i like something and pretty much every type of music got it 
I will say that about everything except for country. <laughs> Actually, there probably are a few country songs. But my point is, I don't like country. You know what I don't do, though? I don't go watch country YouTube videos and, and then, talk about how bad they are. Right, right. <laughs> I wish they would get... I just... I go, as my man Eric says, I go watch or listen to something else. Exactly. And it's kind of like our podcast here or our show or fun with Mike and Adrian, whatever yeah, you want to call it. Because I, I thought about this before, too. Like, you know, do the, the people that talk shit, mm -hmm. do we try to make them happy? No, not at all. No. <laughs> We're going to continue making content for the people that like our content. No, we're going to continue making content for us. True. Because we enjoy it. We like having fun at it. Yes. And you can like it or not. Or not. Yes, that is true. We're going to continue with <clears throat> our brand of fun. Yep. And that's kind of what he's saying. I'm going to continue with, to him, this is his fun. There you go. The boys. And I respect him for standing, you know, digging his heels and standing his ground. And the thing about it is, is that. If you don't have that person out creating that fun, you're not original. And then mm. you have the mosquito boy coming back <laughs> talking about how unoriginal people are. Yep. You know? Hey, George Lucas can't say we're unoriginal. You know? <laughs> um, last piece of news. Captain 4. Captain 4. Captain America 4. Okay. Or as we like to call it here, Captain Falcon. Captain, Captain Falcon. Falcon 1. <laughs> there you go. Um, th there's a rumor that it could reveal how the Avengers assemble or reassemble if you will um as of right now the next avengers movie is scheduled to be released may 1st 2026 avengers the kang dynasty yeah i i'm wondering how they're gonna pull that off dude. you and, and the rest of the comic book world like because wow. we we obviously know jonathan majors has been relieved of his role of kang or relieved of everything. <laughs> yeah, relieved yeah. of everything. Um, I actually read somewhere him and Megan Good were at I, um, some entertainment awards recently, <clears throat> and then they all, it's all also done. So they're slowly getting he's slowly getting back out into the press, the media. Well, you got to go out and eat somewhere. Yeah. Some yeah. At some point, <laughs> might as well you know have you know somebody cool with you, right? Yeah, sure. Now, do you think though, could Marvel be sitting back? and letting him kind of rebuild his public image and then possibly bring him back? Do you sure. think that that's an option? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, the one thing about, I mean, we're not, well, we are a penal system, but <laughs> you should have an opportunity to redeem yourself. Yeah. You know, unless you just have done something atrocious, you know, on the lines of, you know, serial killing and, you know, genocide and stuff like that, you should have an opportunity um, <clears throat> because just because you have been accused of something, that doesn't mm -hmm. necessarily mean that everything has been, you know, uh, considered. Correct. So get a, get a guy an opportunity to redeem himself. I mean, Robert Downey Jr. had an opportunity to redeem sure. himself. Matter of fact, you had people footing the, you know, willing to go on the limb for him. Correct. And look what happened. Exactly. You know? Sarah so, Howard. Yeah. Uh, hey. Now, you know, we seen, I think it was last year, you know, Dana White, the guy who owns UFC? Yeah. We seen him slap the shit out of his wife at a nightclub. Wow. They're in a little drunk argument. Yep. She gets, you know, she gets a little handsy. crazy. Handsy. There mm -hmm. you go. And then Dana just slapped her like he was Cat Williams. Like, put some baby powder <laughs> on his hand and was just smack the shit out of her. And for like two days, he's Hold on, but you're not saying Cat Williams goes around slapping people, are you? <laughs> no, that's Will Smith. Oh, okay. uh, yeah. Oh, there's that. There's that. <laughs> but there was the movie. I don't remember if it was Cat Williams. I think it was in one of the Friday movies with the baby powder. <laughs> oh, you know, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yep, yep. So, yep. I mean, he pretty much did that. Gotcha. On video. It wasn't like the Jonathan Majors where, like, we got this part on video, but not that. And then right. she fell, and then she was drunk, and then she's crazy. And then, mm. you know, it wasn't like that. It was a straight up, you saw it was Dana White. Mm -hmm. You saw his wife. You mm -hmm. saw her get handsy, and you saw him smack the shit out of her. Wow. For about two, three, four days, maybe, he's the worst person in the world. Now I see him in interviews and podcasts every two days. That's okay. No problem. Because he's Dana White. <laughs> No pun I was, I was gonna say. I was gonna say. So, uh, what's the real difference here? Yeah, because he's Dana White, <laughs> and it's not, you know, Jonathan White. It's Jonathan Majors. <laughs> so, but and now you bring up Robert Downey Jr. I think it's there's some parallels. The biggest difference, though, is Robert Downey Jr. was not part of the MCU prior to Iron Man because there was no MCU. Right. But he was in Hollywood, mm -hmm. and he did some things that kind of got him exiled. Right. Mm -hmm. Like. 
you know, or, or just kind of like no one was working with him at that time. Right, right. He was into drug, all kinds of shit. Mm-hmm. And they did give him the opportunity to redeem himself. Mm-hmm. So now let's 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 be clear about this. What he did was things that harmed himself. Correct. It put him in a position to be not reliable. Yep. Things like that. Unlike Flash Boy, who would be, you know, kidnapping people <laughs> yes. and, you know, attacking people and things like that. Yep. So that that's the whole and people brought up, well, you know, why don't they give what's this what's the kid? Ezra. Ezra Mil- Miller. Ezra yeah. Ezra Miller. Yep. Why they, why don't they treat him the way they treated Robert Downey Jr.? That's two completely Correct. different things. Correct. Completely different things. Yeah, so. no, great point. Robert Downey Jr. was hurting himself. Right. Right. And Ezra Miller was kidnapping people, throwing chairs at people in bars and all kinds of crazy shit. And we're right. like, here's the flash. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so anyways. Um, but so I, I, I could see that happening mm-hmm. and I would be okay with that. Right. Let, sure. Like, dude, whatever he did or didn't do, I think we're all, we all agree he made some mistakes. Sure. Now, sure. should we hold him at these, you know, for the rest of his life to this one thing he did? No. It, it, it's, I think they're, it's almost like they're trying to hold him at a level like they do athletes, right? Mm-hmm. Athletes are are considered, for the most part, um, role models. Role models. Right. Like, come on. They should no, you're be. not. No. You, you're not. You, no. You're a guy. You got lucky or, or your talent. Yep. And or your talent puts you in a position to be in a public eye. Correct. That, that, that public eye is not your personal platform. No. And it's also, I don't think it's your job. Like, you, you should be the role model to your own kids. Exactly. Now, if I want my son to learn how to dribble, don't learn that from me. Like, yo, watch Kyrie Irving. Right. <laughs> but I'm not saying you should do everything he does outside Absolutely. of he's his own man. Absolutely. You know? So, anyway, Kang Dynasty supposedly coming out May 1st. They have not wow. changed the name to this yet. Now, this is, you know, two years from now. Mm-hmm. So, essentially, two years is a very long time. Mm-hmm. We could see, sure. you know, Jonathan Majors back in the picture. Or Kang is a character with there's so many variants. A recasting of Kang I don't think would be that distracting. Um, I, I, I agree. Um, but then you look at the Will Smith thing mm. and, and I personally am tired of bringing that up, but <laughs> you, you know, this guy assaulted another guy yep. in front of millions and right. he's already got another movie out. Oh yeah. yeah. Right. I mean, <laughs> yeah. come on. Yep. Yep. But he's not Dana white. <laughs> um, secret wars, Avengers, the sixth movie, um, six Avengers film will come out May 7th of 27. Right. Mm-hmm. So we've in this current phase, do you feel like you have no idea who the actual Avengers are right now and what, what could possibly even happen in this Kang dynasty movie? Um, I am unsure who the Avengers are. Yep. Um, I have no history of or knowledge of them. So I need to be reminded once again, right. How they assembled. Correct. So we're, I'm, not assuming I know there will be an entirely new Avengers team assembling, right? So we have, you know, the Kate Bishop Hawkeyes probably in there. Mm. Um, Ms. Marvel, Kamala Khan, I think she's right. going to be in there. Now, one character we've seen a lot in this current phase is Wong yeah. from yep. Doctor, Doctor Strange, Strange, right? Yep. He was a main character in the last Doctor Strange movie, mm. which, first of all, before, how do you feel about Wong's character? Um, I think it's like a sidekick character that yep. got lucky. And, okay. popu- and popular. You like the character? I mean, he's entertaining. Yeah. But I, which you know, I I think he's part of that comedy thing that mm-hmm. they do too much of sometimes. Yeah. Uh, but outside of that, he's not distracting or anything. Got so. It. So he's not bad comic. But movies. he's not essential either. Right. Could he be? Sure. And I, and the rumor is that's what's going to happen. Okay. Rum- because we've seen him, to your point, in Comic Relief. He was in the She-Hulk show. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Probably one of the better aspects of that show. Right. Um, and he's been in, you know, both Doctor Strange movies. Mm-hmm. I think in the last one, he played... It's probably the only time he's played more than just a sidekick. Because mm-hmm. if you remember, he was the Sorcerer Supreme because right. Strange got snapped away. Right. Right. And um, we really... He got to shine a little bit in this movie. We get to see how mm-hmm. powerful he really was. Mm-hmm. He was essential to the whole <clears throat> Wanda battle. I mean, matter of fact, Wanda had him kind of in, you know, imprisonment or whatnot. Mm-hmm. Um, but he showed up in, he was in, you've not seen Shang-Chi, Shang-Chi. Mm-hmm. Way better than the Eternals, by the way. Really? Yes. Um, actually, a pretty damn good movie. In the post credit scenes, Wong is like... Um, I think he's on like you know one of those Avengers video chats. You know they do got their own little Zoom service, I mm-hmm. guess. Um, and he's basically it seems like he's kind of recruiting a little bit. He shows up in She Hulk, right? Mm-hmm. He's also in Spider Man No Way Home. 
Um, so he's kind of popped around, but but the, the rumor is he's going to be the one that's getting the Avengers back together. He's going to be forming the Avengers. So maybe maybe he's aware of some type of massive threat that we're not yet to where they – because we're going to need some pretty damn good reason for them to reassemble sure. after everything that happens. So um, how do you feel about this rumor, Wong being the one to kind of show up? He's going to show up in – and I'm sorry, the, the, the latter part of this rumor is he's going to show up in Captain America Brave New World, mm. and that's where we're going to find out the reason why the Avengers are going to reassemble and what that looks like. <clears throat> I think con considering how he's that character has ascended, mm. I think it would be interesting, um, uh, an interesting interaction. Yep. But I also think it would be interesting if they just take um, the lady – from um the convenience store in venom oh, and yeah. have one of since venom's whole planet is coming in trying to take over i can see like a little little part of some embryo like overtaking mm. her and giving her superpowers okay and then she goes off and have her own movies too i mean <laughs> why not i mean she's in sure. every she's in every show right right so might as well pop her around the multiverse yeah. yep Dude, if that little symbiote hops in here, we might have our own movie. Right? You, know, you never know. Only mm. comics, The Last Dance. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So I, I mean, I like this. I like the Wong character. You know what's funny? The actor's name is Benedict Wong. Really? Yeah, and he plays Wong, so it was meant to be. Dude. Is this spelled the same? Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Yep. Interesting. Was, some things were just meant to be. Right. Um, all right. Now we like to wrap up our news and rumors segment with a little thumbs up, thumbs down, Adrian. Sure. So this, this is one of the, the beauties of only comics. There's not a That's lot of it. rules. <clears throat> we like to keep it simple. Well, only comics is all beauty. Absolutely. <laughs> most of the time. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> all beauty. Most of the time. All right. You ready? I'm ready. All right. Number one, Tom Hardy <laughs> says that Spider-Man has gone to Feige's camp. But we have our own. He's either calling himself a Spider-Man level character, or maybe the Spider-Man will pop up in the next Venom movie. Yeah. I'll give this thumbs down. Thumbs down. Yeah, because keep it short. You're not. You're not that level. And I just, <clears throat> anyways, let's move on. Number two, <laughs> James Gunn seems to confirm Wonder Woman recast for DCU. Someone asked on Threads um, if Wonder or Wonder Woman hasn't been cast yet. Was mm -hmm. a statement, and he says correct. I give this a thumbs up. They should recast for this DCU. Thumbs up. The Crow remake deemed unwatchable by Cliff Dorfman, an actor and writer of the movie Warrior. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna give this a thumbs up that he went out and said this. <laughs> I was gonna say the same thing. I'm gonna give it a yeah. give it a thumbs up just because it's like it's like a Freudian slip. I mean, yes. we all do it, uh, but you can't. You if you put something on a social media, you might as well just leave right. it there. Uh, but for him to go in and say that, I'm I'd be surprised if he has a job now. Here's the thing, though. Don't tell Cliff Dorfman some shit that you don't want no one to know. Because <laughs> he was brought in like, yo, you're going to get this special screening. Right. They don't tell anyone. He's like, all right, cool, bet, no doubt. Watches it. He's like, man, this shit sucks. And goes and types. He's like, oh, man, I said I wasn't going to say anything. <laughs> yeah, but was that planned, though? Ooh. By who? <laughs> L little conspiracy there, you know? Maybe. A little inside. They're trying right. to take him down. Because, you know, some people, I mean, in order to get somebody to see something, whether it's good, a train wreck is mm. much more entertaining sure. than just a train now going going by every day. We're talking about it, right? Exactly. Wow. So they just they mm. duped us, dude. They got us to talk about the yeah, Crow remake. It, so there you have it. it. Well, that's all we're gonna say about it. Um, the boy showrunner Eric Kripke responds to woke complaints. Essentially, tells these guys to go watch something else. Like it. Thumbs up, Eric. Thumbs up. Yep. Tell them you don't you don't like it. See ya. Hit the road. That's it. You say back in the day, hit the road, Jack. What they say now, go beat some rocks, or yeah. does that mean something else? I don't know what kick that some, means. Kick some kick rocks. rocks. Kick bitch. rocks, Yeah. <laughs> um, last piece of news, Wong. Wong is rumored to show up in Captain America 4, or Captain Falcon, as Captain we call Falcon. it here, and build to the next Avengers movie. I'm giving that rumor a thumbs up. I'd like to see that. Thumbs up. That, yeah. I think it'll be entertaining. I mean, but I mean, by the time it comes out in two more years, how yeah. many other people are going <laughs> to be in there? It's like you're going to get whiplash trying to yes. keep track of all the. You're going to need a tracking system <laughs> to keep track of all of the moving parts in this movie. Damn, we'll have to build it here on Only Comics. And there's a reason I said tracking system. Yes. we'll get to it later. All right, cool. Um, one speaking of this, here's a little bonus rumor for you guys. Mm -hmm. Secret Wars, the movie, the the sixth Avenger movie, rumored to come out May seventh of twenty seven. The rumor right now is there will be over sixty characters in that movie returning. Okay, sixty. Yep, it's a lot to manage, dude. I, I we'll have to look back and, and count. You know, you know what? Next week, I'm gonna put together a list. Me and my boy Chat Chat mm -hmm. GBT yep. of 
the most comic book characters in a movie. And we're going to see how, because 60 sounds like a lot, but I mean, there was a lot in Endgame, right? Right. I, I don't know how close to 60 it was. So Well, Secret Wars has to be. I mean, you have it's to have be a more, lot right? of people, right? Yeah. Yeah, you got to. But even the comics <laughs> there were. I mean, dude, there's, I mean, remember some of those panels? Oh, like, yeah. Dude, just people everywhere. Yep. So, anyway, um, there you have it. Thumbs up, thumbs down. In um, DC's um, <clears throat> Infinite Crisis, mm. there's not only a lot of characters, but there's versions of right. the same characters. True. So, I mean, you got a whole room full of Supermans and Batmans and yep. this Wonder Woman eyeballing that Superman. <laughs> and it's like, and then Bruce Wayne over there, he all pissed off because of course he is. it was weird. Yeah. Which we could see some of that in Secret Wars because of this multiversal right. war going on. Like. I don't. It's not going to be a carbon copy of the Secret Wars comic. It will be inspired by like most of the you know MCU stuff. So, so you, we're going to have uh, old Magnus throwing the blue eyes on, on, on the women over there. <laughs> Magnus, man, yo, if he busts out this fetching helmet right here, dude, it's a wrap. All right. Um. So, anyway, moving on. God mode's at it again, Adrian. Let's do it. He says. Um. So well, we talked last week. We, you know, if you haven't seen the show last week, X Men. Versus the MCU was the theme. Mm -hmm. And we had picked, um, with a little help from chat, GPT, the most powerful X-Men characters on screen versus the most powerful MCU characters on screen. On okay. screen, And then I posed the question, who would win? And the three, if I remember right, for the Fox um, universe, it was Apocalypse, Jean Grey, and Magneto. And okay. then um, maybe, you can go back and correct us if we're wrong. And for the MCU, it was Thor... It was, um, shit, Thanos, and there was one more, Scarlet Witch. Okay. You said the MCU would win. Mm -hmm. I said the X-Men would win. Mm -hmm. the, the God Mode, the tiebreaker, says X-Men would win. So okay. we'll go with that, you know. Ah, sure. Uh, well, we had the coin, too. We could always flip that. I brought it back for you this week, Adrian. I see. So I see. That. Look at that. You know, nice. why, why don't we settle this right now? Let's do it. You're going to call it in the air. Would the, would the top, the big three from the X-Men universe beat the MCU? Call mm -hmm. it in the air. Heads. Heads. It's heads. The MCU won. There, there you, go. you go. That's how we solve it here, dude. Yep. So let's do that in politics. So too. now, do we have a God mode and Adrian flip? Oh, um, maybe. It's, it's a conflict. It is a conflict. Yeah. So should we flip between you two? I, <laughs> I don't care. It's not that important. You know what God mode does have though? Another question. Let's do it. Worst movie villains. So we we talked about the best a few weeks ago. Wait. Wait a minute. The worst <laughs> cast. The worst power set. Or just the most nonsensical? I think he's going with, where, I'll read you his list. Okay. I think he's going with worst cast. I think he's going with worst portrayal, actually. So, okay. Mr. Freeze, Arnold Schwarzenegger. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Jared Leto's Joker. Yeah. Jesse Eisenberg's Lex Luthor. Yeah. Topher Grace's Venom. That's from Spider-Man 3. Yeah. And then Oscar Isaac's Apocalypse are his worst. Oh, wow. So I think he's going worst portrayal. You got to throw in um, uh, George Clooney's Batman. Well, he's not a villain. With, with the, oh, villain. <laughs> You're saying he was so bad that it was a villain? I, <laughs> we it, could, George was nippalicious. <laughs> <laughs> Which is not a, it's not a good thing in this one. Not a good in thing. In case you're confused. So worst movie worst villains. Worst movie. So uh, I, I agree. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking he's talking about portrayals. Yeah. Of, yep. okay, so we'll go with it. that. Yeah. Portrayals. Yeah. And God mode, if you're if, if we're not hitting hitting the, uh, the nail on the head, then please let us know. Let us know, bro. Yes, sir. Um, worst movie villain portrayals, mm. dude. I would have to go with all of those. I mean, most of those. Uh, let's see who now, I would now. Swap now, out. did we agree that Catwoman is not a villain? She's like anti-hero, which makes yeah, it, which, which I, knocks out Halle Berry. Yes, I think so. Okay. And in that movie, it wasn't even like the comic version. I don't even think she was a villain in that movie. Okay. So, yes. Now, I agree. Well, first of all, my number one mm -hmm. is Oscar Isaac's Apocalypse. Right. For me, that is the worst portrayal of a villain in live action movie. Right. Be and, and it's, there are some that probably mm -hmm. look worse. Um, actually, I don't even know. But be, it also has to do with how amazing of a character Apocalypse is in the comics. Right, right, right. The, the, the majority of that portrayal is expectation. Right. You expect this beast, this Thanos level yes. character, and you get this I, I don't even know what to call it, dude. It's Ivan Ooze from the <laughs> fucking Power Ooh. Rangers is what it is. That's exactly what it is. Uh Ivan Ooze. Yeah. Wow. That's what it looks like. But yeah, so that is definitely because it's like, dude, if you screw up some like, you know, sideline characters, some shitty villain, who cares? Like right. all right, Hawkeye. Right. <laughs> 
if you screw Hawkeye up on screen, I'm like, dude, my man, I've said this before. He looks like a purple Robin Hood on crack in the comics. <laughs> so if you screw him up on screen, who cares? Right. You screw up Spider-Man, we're going to have some issues. Mm -hmm. We got problems, yep. you know. So Apocalypse would be my number one, right? Mm -hmm. I don't think the Venom, Topher Grace's Venom, is as bad. It's definitely not a good villain. Mm -hmm. I would almost say it's better than the Tom Hardy portrayal. Eddie Brock. Uh, are we talking about the the human person or the, yes, the, the Eddie Venom? Brock. Okay. Yeah, the, I would say that his Eddie Brock, his Venom, it was all right. It was, eh. Um, well, clearly, it wasn't good enough for him to maintain the Venom oh, no. thing. Yeah, you know, it was movie. definitely not good. It was probably it was below average. Right. We'll put it there. But I, I wouldn't have that on my worst so list. So if if you say that his portrayal was better than um, <laughs> Tom Hardy, Tom Hardy, but Tom Hardy is now what fourth generation Venom or some third generation third Venom? Movie, yeah, yeah. So I don't know. Ooh, somebody no. disagrees with you. Oh yeah, and yeah. The the stupid ass Sony executives <laughs> that keep making these <laughs> shitty movies. Um, why don't y'all just listen to us? You know. Uh. Um, so, anyways, um, Lex Luthor, Jesse Eisenberg's Lex Luthor, it was pretty bad. Oh, it was. Would you say that's one of the worst though? I yeah, it, okay. it was bad only because it's 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 actually disrespectful to the like, Lex Luthor. Kind of like my apocalypse right. issue. Yeah. It was just, I it was it was just bad. Yep. All right, so we got apocalypse. We agree on Lex <clears throat> Luthor's Eisen, uh, Jesse Eisenberg's Lex Luthor. Yep. Jared Leto's Joker is one of the worst for me. I didn't find it that bad. Okay. He wasn't. He wasn't noticeably. Di I, <clears throat> I wasn't looking at him saying, "Oh my God, this is a horrible joke." Okay. Like when I was looking at you know the apocalypse mm -hmm. or um, I forgot the other one. Oh, Eisenberg. I, Eisenberg. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm looking at Eisenberg. I'm like, oh my God, <laughs> how could they do this to <laughs> Lex Luthor? Right. You know, uh, it, it was just bad. Okay. So we're going to, this, this, this is the rule I just came up with. We're going to find five that we agree on, and that's going to be our only comic five. So yep. we got Apocalypse, yep. uh, Oscar Isaac. We got Jesse Eisenberg's Lex Luthor. Mm -hmm. We don't agree on Jared Leto. You nope. think he's he's okay, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, who else do we have? We got, um, dun, dun, dun. Uh, mm -hmm. who is it? Darben from um, Captain Marvel 2 or the Marvels with the girls. I don't even consider that character. Um, um, kind of um, same thing. Uh, character enemy. Was, just eh, whatever. Yep. All right. Who else you got that is um, horrible in your mind? Oh, uh, Mr. Freeze, Arnold Schwarzenegger. Okay. That was bad. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I, I'd agree with horrible. that. Horrible? It, yeah, it was, it was, pretty, it was pretty horrible. Because Freeze is a, he's an awesome villain. Yeah, he the is. Real, like, if you watch the animated series, Batman, mm -hmm. and that, like, the story, I, I think that episode actually won, like, an Emmy or something. Mm -hmm. The writing when, you know, they give right. his origin of his wife and shit. Um, all right, so Arnold Schwarzenegger's Freeze, um, Oscar Isaac's Apocalypse, Jesse Eisenberg's Lex Luthor. That's three. We got right. to get two more. I mean, th th there's a lot of good villains. Like, I mean, I'm looking at this list here. Loki, amazing. Sure. Um, what about Aldrich Killian as the Mandarin? Like, you remember when they they switched up the Mandarin in Iron Man three? It was the guy with the um, extremist virus and stuff. I, I don't. I don't think that that's. That was kind of misdirection. Okay. So as a so I wouldn't consider him a bad villain. Yeah. Um, they just put a face on somebody um, right. to distract them from um, the real person behind the scenes kind okay. of thing. So I, don't, I wouldn't consider that a bad portrayal. Um, what else we got? We got Talos in Captain Marvel. I don't know. I don't think that was mm. horrible. Quentin Beck's Mysterio in Far From Home. I actually kind of enjoyed him. Mm. Um Let's see. We also have dun, 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 Starro the Conqueror in the Suicide Squad, the giant starfish. <laughs> Considering that movie, I don't, I don't, <laughs> that, I, I think that was appropriate. Okay. Um, let's see. General Zod. Yeah, I, th I thought he was pretty good. Yeah. All right. Who else we got? Someone who's horrible, Adrian. The Ghost from Ant Man and the Wasp. That was kind of shitty, but I wouldn't say no. horrible. Malekith. Malekith. From Thor: Dark World, the freaking blue elf that was just like so it was just n non-existent. So much so uh, it was a blip on my screen. <laughs> I wouldn't even even consider that a villain. It's just somebody that was just there. Got it. Got it. I got one. Do that. We were talking about this last week. The Wolverine. Mm -hmm. Remember the Silver Samurai in that movie? Oh yeah. Who yeah, was yeah. like eight eight feet tall? Like it was just right. now that third act of that movie was horrible mm -hmm. 
But I, I would throw that in there. Silver Samurai from the Wolverine. I would throw in uh, Ryan's Reynolds mouth sewn up on, the, on top you of know the what? thing. Scrap that. You're right. There's right. four. You're yep. right. The fake Deadpool. Yeah, the fake Deadpool. So we got the fake Deadpool. We got Arnold Schwarzenegger. Yeah. We got Oscar Isaac. We got Jesse Eisenberg. We need one more. Number five. What about a cha- Enchantress from the Suicide Squad? That was a bad one. I don't, First movie. I don't even remember her. It was so bad you don't even remember. Exactly. Um, Ego, the Living Planet, and Guardians 2. Appropriate. I okay. Think. You didn't mind that one? No. Um, Steppenwolf in Justice League. What would you think about that oh, one? Oh, that was horrible. That was bad, right? Yeah, that was pretty bad. Like the original, not, yeah, yeah. not the Snyder Cut. I think yeah. they, they did a little job of redeeming him there. Yeah. All right, so we'll go with that. Steppenwolf. Mm-hmm. We got... Um, the, the the bad uh, Deadpool. Yep. Ryan Reynolds, Deadpool from X-Men Origins. Yep. Oscar Isaac's Apocalypse. Yep. Jesse Eisenberg's Lex Luthor, Atrocious. Mm-hmm. Um, and then what was the last one? My man... Um, Mr. Freeze. Mr. Freeze, Arnold Schwarzenegger. Yeah. There's our list. There you go. With a bunch of honorable mentions. Mm-hmm. Um, what about the, the Doctor Doom? The Cloud, um, not the Cloud, that was... Um, that, that was Galactus. Galactus. The Galactus it, Cloud? That was so... That was so shitty. Yeah. It's just, it's it's not, it's below bad. Okay. Because there was, that was an absolute <laughs> misrepresentation. Yeah. So it's not like it was a bad portrayal of, of, of a character. Got that it. was just a complete mis mis uh, representation of a character. Okay. What about the Doctor Doom in the Fantastic Four movie? Um I actually thought the actor did a good job yeah. of the portrayal. I just don't think they gave Doctor Doom his cred. So more the writing is yeah, yeah. gotcha. Okay. All right. Well there you have it. There's our worst movie villains as of today. As of today. <laughs> All right. Higher or lower, Adrian? This is the game where oh, I, my God. I take advantage of your... Of, of me, of actually. <laughs> <laughs> That's what actually happens. Just the fact that you don't pay attention to Rotten Tomatoes. I, I don't. That I hasn't don't. changed in the past week? Nope. If it not. ever changes, you'll let me know. I will not let you know. <laughs> I will just do better on my scores. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> so if you start nailing these, then we know, like, exactly. oh, he's checking these. Yeah. Damn, I just gave up yep. my secret. Yep. But you have no idea I, what movies I have in store. So you would you'd be just shooting in the dark if right. you were trying to guess these. So yep. All right. Our baseline, since we're talking Avengers, Adrian, we're mm-hmm. talking about, you know, Kang Dynasty, Secret Wars. I'm gonna use the original mm-hmm. Avengers movie as our baseline. Okay. Great movie, right? Sure. Yep. Um I don't know, I haven't watched this movie yet. Maybe a year or two. Mm-hmm. Um, every once in a while. It's a, movie. it's a movie that I can kind of throw on and pick up at any point. Right. I don't think it's perfect. I think if I had to critique this movie, the beginning was a little slow, like Mm -hmm. with the whole, the scepter and then the Nick Fury beginning and like, it was just the, it it felt, and it it didn't feel as big as some other Marvel movies. Now at Mm -hmm. the time we had like four or five MCU movies. So this was a, this was a big deal. Mm -hmm. Um, Anyways, you don't know this movie score. No. All right. So here's my list. And I actually, a little spoiler, I'm going one by one through the Avengers movies. So, Avengers, the first Avengers movie, did mm-hmm. this movie score higher or lower than Avengers Age of Ultron? Lower. N- eh, higher. Wow. All right, moving on. Did Avengers 1 score higher or lower than Infinity War? Lower. Eh, wrong. Did Avengers number 1, the first Avengers movie, score higher or lower than Endgame? Lower. Correct. Ding, ding, ding. We really got to get about. I keep saying it every week, and I just do my <laughs> shitty version of the Or maybe we'll just go with that. We'll just go with that. Yeah, all right. Cool. That works. We don't need a bell. I'm a oh, bell. We don't, have, we don't have the room. Yeah. The space. <laughs> well, yeah, we got Moynihan here. <laughs> we got Batman. We got this fetching helmet, all you right. know. Um, all right. So you're right about that one. Next up, did Avengers score higher or lower than Thor Ragnarok? Um, I'll say lower. Correct. Ding, ding, ding. Look at you redeeming yourself. Yo, you're two and two right now. This yep. Last one will determine if you win this round. You won last week. Okay. All right, you got a win streak, dude. You're you're oh and you're like one and three right now. <laughs> <laughs> right? I don't know. I'm making uh, it whatever. Up. But I know basically you're on a one win streak right now. All right. Last one. Captain mm-hmm. America Civil War. Okay. So did Avengers one score higher or lower than Captain America Civil War? Uh lower. And wrong. You oh. lost this week. So that's okay. Yes. Now these are interesting because um now we've talked about Rotten Tomatoes, like I don't necessarily always agree with their scores. Mm-hmm. I think they're a lot of times close. Sure. 
So, Avengers 1 was scored 91% on Rotten Tomatoes. Wow. Okay. You think that is fitting? You think it should be higher or lower in, in your book? I think it's a, a little high. Okay. I, w- I would give it 85 or 85. so. 85. All right. So, Avengers Age of Ultron was scored 76%. Mm, that's that's fitting. I think that's fair, right? That's, that's yeah. about a, a C-plus movie for yeah. me, right? Um, Infinity War. This is where, like, dude, I almost threw up. Because... <laughs> Anyway, I'll, I'll get into this later, but Infinity War, 85%. Yeah, that's that, not that's not right. No. That's not right at all. What would you score Infinity War? 91, maybe? 92 I'd, I'd probably go 95. I, to me, I think it's probably the best movie in the MCU. Right. You know, I possibly. Now, someone, well, this one's better. Maybe it is. I don't know. But 85, that is, that's an atrocity to, yeah. to call that movie 85. Wow. Um, Endgame, 94%. I, for me, that's high. 90s, but yeah, yeah, that's a bit high. Like, I love that movie, but I, I've said this before. I I feel, obviously Rotten Tomatoes doesn't feel this way, that mm-hmm. Infinity War is a better movie than Endgame. Cl- clearly, you're wrong. Yeah, <laughs> according <laughs> to them. How do you feel? Which which one would you say is a better overall movie? Um, Endgame over Infinity War. I would say Endgame. Really? Yeah. Okay. Um, I think Endgame had some bigger moments. I mean, the, the, the end and, of Endgame. And I think that's what a lot of people are thinking oh, yeah. about, the, you know, the bigger moments, but Correct. the overarching thing. I, I would agree, you know, Infinity War. Okay, but Endgame, so as we swip back, look at that. Look at that. Yeah, moved just, you right exactly. back. Exactly. Yeah. So you, you moved like some people move out of the left lane when I'm driving. <laughs> those, dude, I, I would say to my wife, I want to have like a hologram that pops outside my car. For when those people move, just like a thank you. Right. Thank you. Because you get it. Like, maybe you just veered over in the left lane by accident. Right. You didn't know where you were. You, you're clueless. Mm. And then you see me coming up behind you in my black charger going 92 miles an hour, maybe. Right. Or maybe going right exactly the speed limit, depending on who's watching. I I, I think you mean this one mile an hour over the speed yeah, limit. Exactly, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. That. And then they see me and they go, oh, shit, this guy wants to go. And they just put their little signal light on. Right. They slide over into the traveling lane as i pass them by i just want to i want to have something that pops out like this thank you you know right, and then something right. else for when the person doesn't you got to go past them on the right side there you go anyway there you go um so end game 94 thor ragnarok this movie got a 93 percent on rotten tomatoes i don't on i that's kind of high yeah um, even though i did i did like the oh movie. i love that movie yeah um but that, but that's yeah that's a bit high it's high like so <clears throat> according to the scale Thor Ragnarok is a better movie than Avengers Infinity War? Wow. No. You're on that same crack that Hawkman, or a Hawkman, Hawkeye was smoking in the comics when he put in that purple suit. Mm. It's You're insane. There's no way. So, Thor, now, I would give Thor Ragnarok 85. Sure. You know, entertaining, fun, the best Thor movie. Mm-hmm. But it did not have the weight that Infinity War, anyways. Captain America <laughs> Civil War, 90%. Fitting. Fitting. I think that's low. I'd give that movie a 97%. Wow. Yeah, I'm, I'm a little Captain America Civil War biased here. Okay. Adrian. So, okay. well, there you have it on higher or lower. Um, now, the Avengers movies as a whole, great, right? Mm-hmm. The only, and I wouldn't even really call it a miss, but the, the only low point is Age of Ultron. Yeah. You know, it it's not a bad movie by any means. Mm-hmm. It's just not as good as any of the other Avengers movies. You know, um, I cannot, you know how you have things that you your mind associates with other things automatically mm-hmm. right and ever since x-men 97 when rogue i cannot think of captain america without rogue throwing his shield <laughs> into the mountains i can't ever again do that was the funniest thing right so how much would you love to see that happen in live action um i would not actually no? because no because the x-men 97 it's like uh, something that it's like a, a um the Mona Lisa, right? Mm. It's something that should only happen once okay. and should be preserved, wow. right? So even in the, because we don't, there's no difference between animated movies and real life movies sure. anymore, right? It captured it so perfectly. I think mm. it should not be redone. Okay. It should just be preserved. Got it. Got it. I'd like to see it. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I would like, but now, and, and I, when I say this, it will never happen because I'd like to see the Chris Evans, you know, cap. Right, because he can be you know, now in a good way. He can be a little too Boy Scoutish at times, uh-huh. right? In that way, the character's written, and he should be. Mm-hmm. 
but the, we've not seen a like a good rogue portrayal in live action. Mm-hmm. You know, Anna Paquin, great actress, but with, character sure. was written wrong. Sure, I'd love to see a badass rogue do that to Chris Evans. He's you know, his yeah. mind just get the shit out of here. <laughs> What's wrong with you? You know, anyways. Um, but there you have it. Higher or lower, dude. But yeah, Avengers as a whole, love those movies. Um, and I mean, this really puts the focus on this Kang Dynasty movie. Because mm-hmm. they got some decisions to make pretty damn soon. To your point, you mentioned earlier, it takes a couple of years to make a movie. Right. Now, either they've made these decisions and they're not telling us yet. Probably mm-hmm. that one. Um, if you were a betting man, would you bet that I'm going to give you three outcomes here with Kang Dynasty, okay? One is they change the name of the movie and wipe Kang out of it and rewrite that part of the movie, okay? Mm-hmm. Two is they recast Kang, completely mm-hmm. different actor, and move on just as they would, just as they had planned to. Three, Jonathan Majors cleans up his public image, right? Mm-hmm. Gets, gets over good with the public again, right, right. and he's back as Kang. Which one do, do you do? Some think? community service. Yeah, there you go. Community service. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. You clean up the you wipe off the graffiti that you did. You know? right. So, mm-hmm. which one do you think would happen? I think the thing that would make the most sense would be if they changed the name, which mm-hmm. would automatically wipe out Kang, which would automatically disassociate Got the it. Jonathan Majors character. Okay. So the renaming would do everything for them. Got it. Um, so that's what you that's what you would do, or is that what no, you think will happen? No. Um, what I would do is bring Jonathan Majors okay. back. I would keep the name, Got it. but that's just me. Got you it. know, I think, um, I think the people that whatever this news did, you know, uh, I think the people are smaller set. Mm. The Jonathan Majors news, I think, pissed off fewer people than the people that would be excited to see him come back as. Okay. Kane. Got it. Got it. So if you if if you're in charge, you're bringing them back, but you you think that they're going to rename it. Um, yeah, I think they'll yeah. re- they'll rename. Okay, I so I agree with you in the first one. If I'm in charge, I bring him back. Right, let him redeem himself. I mean, we'll do some press. He can do some public apologies if he needs to. Mm-hmm. He could whatever. Yeah, but he's also got two years to do other stuff too. Sure, you know he doesn't have to stay in this this Kang role. I mean, I'm sure he's not in this closet at home practicing on Kang, and he can't <laughs> he can't disassociate himself sure. from a character that he plays. Oh, you're saying have to do some other stuff? Yeah. that does well, and then yeah, yeah, sure. that, that that keeps him in in the public, like because yep. he needs to eat, right? Correct. I mean, you got to you got to do something, right? So I I agree. I would do that. <clears throat> what I think is going to happen. I think they're going to proceed with Kang Dynasty and just recast like it never happened mm-hmm. and just keep it moving and just pray everyone just accepts it. Right. Based off of their track record. Mm-hmm. I mean, think about the Edward Norton Hulk. Right. Dude, what, now, completely different issue, but he was a problem on set. Uh, from what everyone says, he's kind of an asshole. They just dropped him, replaced him with Mark Ruffalo like he never existed. Right. Terrence Howard, Rhodey. Mm. Oh, you don't want to get paid a lot less for the next movie? See you, dude. <laughs> Wow, we're gonna and then we're gonna cast someone who looks nothing like you, completely different complexion and everything. I'm like, how does like, right? This is strange. Like, can we at least do someone that kind of resembles the, right. the who we had before? So, and, yeah. and Rhodey is a darker, yeah, black person, not you know, not like not not the light skinned brother. True, right? True. So I, I don't even know what he. Oh, that's what true. He got it, is that more, it is closer to, to comic accurate with Don Cheadle, right? But right, it's just it's a drastic change from what we saw before. Sure. But sure. so they shouldn't have. They should not have. They, sh- they sh- I think they should have done two things. They should not have cast um, Terrence. Um, Terrence Howard, okay, because he doesn't look like the comic book yeah. um, character Rhodey, or they should have left him alone, sure, and play the character and make make his own. Just like um, um, Robert Downey Jr. Mm-hmm. made that that version of Tony Stark, they could have allowed Terrence Howard to make that sure. version of Rhodey. They just didn't want to pay him, and he didn't want to pay right. cut. You know? But it also you know why didn't they just recast T'Challa? Exactly. You know, so they, I that, that's a whole. T'Challa travesty. should have been, re- dude. What's his, um Chadwick Boseman's own brother came out and said that, and this is does not get a lot of news. I don't know why, you know, because he's not. Oh, you know why? White. Um, <laughs> so, anyways, but he had come out and said like, my uh, brother would have wanted y'all to like he wouldn't have wanted this role to death. But basically, he loved this role so much. Right. He would have wanted it to be continued. Of course. You of know, course. and I, I do. I think they should have. You know, they could have done it in a respectful way. They could have still Absolutely. honored him. And they could have got creative and honored Chadwick Boseman in the movie in some way, <laughs> shape, or form. Right. And recast him. 
But what do I know? Just I, I I think I love that. Matter of fact, um, the second Panther movie, um, the opening credits. Oh yeah, it was bad. You know ass. that was that was just awesome. That yep. that part right there would have been enough, and then they yeah. could have moved on. Right. Um, instead of what they did. Instead of what they did. Yep. So, all right, we're gonna move on, and we're gonna move on to hidden gem, Adrian, your segment. So, um. Was I right? Is it a DC hidden gem this week? It is a DC okay. um, hidden gem this week, and there's a reason why I said what I did earlier about what I say a GPS Track- tracking yes. system. Yeah. All right. You ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Dude. Right. That was a teaser. Was, you just <laughs> dude, you're like a professional over here. You know? uh, we we try to be. We're trying. Have fun. Yep. Trying to be a professional. There you go. There we go. All right. So this week's hidden gem is someone that I kind of identified with as a, when I first started reading comics, right? Okay. As a matter of fact, um, this character got me involved in like the Justice League. I mean, well, let me step back. So the Justice League existed as cartoons on, t- on the TV before I got into comics. Okay. So I was watching the Justice League, um, um, you know, Superman and, and yeah. all that kind of stuff. As a child, like seven, eight years old okay. or something like that. So you got like into the cartoons first. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. Cartoons first. And then what got me into the comics, one of the characters, just like I identify with um, Iron Man and Franklin Richards, yeah. things like that. On the DC side, I identify with this character. Um, and this character is Cyborg. Mm. And the reason that I identify with this character is one of the things that he had to deal with was his appearance right and i had some appearance issues when i was a kid used to get teased a lot things like that okay um and through this character you realize that you know people have perspectives of you and it's your responsibility to pretty much get over it Mm. um you have to you know figure out a way to navigate your own life um even with the things that people may say to you that may be harmful got it right so you connected with this character at a young age because of that Correct. Yeah. Correct. So um, Cyborg was always interesting to me because he was the amalgamation of a couple of things. You know, mm. um, you know, he was teased or whatever, even though he was a popular character when he became Cyborg. That's the portion that I'm talking about. Yeah. Um, so he had to overcome a bunch of stuff. But he also had that high tech part, which I loved about like Iron Man and, and uh, Reed Richards. Right. So um, Victor Stone. He was a um, high school, you know, athlete, very popular on his way. His father, his father and his mother were like brilliant scientists. And um, they wanted him to be, he wanted to be the pro athlete, like in front of the camera, kind of the popular guy. They wanted him to be like them. You know, okay. Even though he, he, he has, um, like T'Challa, he has a genius level intellect, right? Um but he always had this thing with his father so he goes to his lab and now there's two versions of cyborg okay there is the one i grew up with and then there's this recasting or rewriting of him um i think in 2011 2011 or something like that so what happened in my in the version that i grew up with was he went to see his father at at this he went to see his parents at, at their lab yeah and his parents was working on this interdimensional thing um something happened um this cloud like entity you know got free and before the father could press the button to suck him back in victor had got attacked and that affected you know half of his body pretty got much it. so his father in a scramble to save his life did all the things that he did um you know hooked him up with all these you know advanced technologies and things like that in the 2011 version he still goes to see his his Parent. Oh, and by the way, his mother got killed in that accident. Okay. Right. So accident kills his mom, destroys this kid to the point where his dad's got to build him or put him back together like a cyborg. Correct. Gotcha. Correct. Um, in the 2000, the post 2011 version, he still goes to the lab to yeah. visit, you know, his, his father because his, he has a difference of opinion. You know, I want to be me. You want me to be somebody else. So, you know, I, that whole kid thing yeah. goes there. And the lab is attacked by the whole planet basically is being attacked by our uh, dark side, uh, the parademons. Okay. So the lab gets attacked. Um, and during an explosion, uh, Victor gets affected. Right. And in an attempt to save his son, 
he uses some of the technology from uh, the parademons of the father box to uh, repair Victor. Now, the 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 power um the father box is like a component of it, but mm-hmm. he uses things that he <clears throat> that he already has laying of course laying around. Sure. So wait, that's <clears throat> similar to the origin in the Justice League movie, the live action. Right. They were were they mother boxes in that movie? I think so. Right. You right. know their version, but same like, mother box, father well, box. Yeah, same difference, but yeah. it blew up. I guess it depends what holiday you're closer to. Maybe sure. you know. Sure. So this week it'd be father boxes. <laughs> right? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. But similar to that origin, but you're, that Correct. was rewritten in 2011. In the Correct. Gotcha. Correct. So either way, he got um, this cyborg body. Yeah. Um, as a result of his father's um, intervention to, to save his son, and his, and also in this version, um, he got amped up a bit so as a result instead of millennium which he got in the version that i grew up with the metal that he got uh his his robotic components yep he got this metal uh, i forget the name of it but it's supposed to be dc's version of adamantium pretty much the, the strongest metal in the dc universe okay and um some other components from different things so what that enabled cyborg to do and become is that of course he, he wakes up from this and half his body's gone. You know, mm. he blames his father, all this other <laughs> kind of stuff. He escapes, you know, the lab, goes all walking around eventually because he couldn't even, you know, walk initially. Right. He ends up saving some lady on the street from a parademon because, again, you know, Dark Side is invading the entire Earth and there's parademons all over the place. Yeah. Um, so during that exchange, um, he also picks up um, the father, um, some, some other capability. Um, because of, you know, the parademons are using these father box, mother boxes to move around. Got right. It. So as a result, Cyborg with between his father's um, replacement components and the father box power sets, right? Mm-hmm. And all these different metals, he can do a lot of stuff, dude. So, all, so he already has a genius level intellect. He just likes to play sports. Yeah, in both origins, was he? I know he was an all-star football player in the movie, and the later one was he? In both, was he an all-star football player? Uh, yeah, he was an all-star okay. football player in, in both, and he was a genius-level intellect in both. Got it. All right. So, as a result, he can, as a living human, right, living uh, computer, he can interface with any, obviously, any computer system in the world. Yeah. Um, as um. He can access any information from if it's co- internet connected, he can access it. As a matter of fact, he and Bruce, uh, uh, for those that don't know who Bruce is, <laughs> Batman, yes. they c- created a program called the Grid, which pretty much became an entity on its own later on, and they had to separate them and all this other kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, he, he, they created this program that runs in the background because Victor was, or Cyborg is connected to the world continuously. He could be distracted by all the information. If that makes yeah. any sense, right? If you, all the crap that we have available to us now, um, you're being distracted by it. Imagine if you plugged in continuously to the entire uni- yeah. uh, internet all the time. He's just got like the best Wi-Fi hookup, dude, wherever he's yeah. at, he is just connected. And if he doesn't have it, he creates it. Damn. So um, he's cons- he, he's connected to all the information. He can look at you and tell everything about you. Yeah. You know, your social trolling, your credit score, your Damn. everything, right? So he has that. Um, he can, his metal parts, he can transform into other things like um, sonic cannons. He has different weapon systems that he can transform his body, like his arm into like a sonic cannon. Mm-hmm. So he has access or the capability to pretty much um, create any kind of thing from his mechanical parts. He moves around because of the father box or the mother box. Um, he can teleport, right? Yeah. To not only across um, um, universes, but multi multiverses. Now, the only crutch is that there's a, a timer, like not a timer, but after like a thousand jumps, mm-hmm. he could just end up on a dark size world. Okay. Right. It, it would like automatically take him there. So he can move himself and other people uh, through the use of this father box, these boom box technologies. Yeah. Matter of fact, he has a silent box kind of a thing, uh, stealth 
mode where he can move to where even Superman can't even detect that he's moved, right? Got it. So he has these things. This um this new metal that he's encased in, right, can gives him obviously more durability. Um, his whole cyborg components gives him more strength. Um, whoever writes him, he was, it was at 50 tons when I was first introduced mm -hmm. to him. Um, then it went down to two tons. Now sure. it's somewhere between 15 and 20. Either way. Yeah. That's a lot. Right. Yeah, yeah. Um, you don't need to be Superman strength to be effective. Correct. Um, and he can all, I'm, I'm assuming like Iron Man, he can add on some attachments to make himself anything. And that's the whole point. He has this body where he can attach himself to anything and he can make himself be anything. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's been even written to be like a transformer where his whole, his whole body was able to be transformed into something bigger, larger, faster, stronger, so on right, and so forth. Right. So I, I think this is an interesting character. Now, because of his, he's, he's, um, his healing factor, he has a healing factor, right? So okay. he's got nanites running through his um, uh um, human parts, but he also has these systems in place where unless he just pretty much get disintegrated because mm -hmm. every, every character has died, right? So he's of course had died. He's been torn apart and his body rebuilt, not only his mechanical parts, but his also his also his flesh part. So I think an interesting character. And I think that he is kind of underrated in a way yeah. because of the sheer capability of him you know he was initially part of the teen titans um um which is how i got introduced to the titans um when i was in high school but doing this rewrite he was actually a founding me member of the justice league because of this dark side invasion okay so he did this uh boom to when he um fought the parademon off of this person that he just happened to be walking through the city mm -hmm. with, he picked up this boom tube technology and it took him to this battle where Batman, Superman, Wonder Woman were fighting the rest of these parademons. Okay. He got involved. And so therefore they formed this team um, as a result of that. Got right. It. So that's, he became a founder. Which founded, origin is that? Is that the second one? Yeah, that's the second one. Okay. The, the post 2011 Got origin. It. Right. So he became not a founding member of the, he, he became not just a member of the Teen Titans. He became a founding member of the Justice League. Got it. Right. So that's why he, cause he shows up in certain comics. He's a Justice League member and others to your point, he's a Titan, Teen Titans member. Right. He's a, he's in that little kids cartoon, Teen Titans Go. If you ever right. seen that, it's uh, actually I love, love that. Yeah, I love that show. Dude, yeah, it's it's. I mean, for a kids show, yep. it's hysterical. Yep. And there's like a movie they came out with a few years ago too. So, yep. um, but anyway, so that I've always wondered that. I'm like, dude, half the time he's a Titan, Teens Titan, mm -hmm. and other half the time he's Justice League. So right. that explains the two different origins. Yep. So I mean, they they've also written in some things that, and then taken it out, um, where he had pretty much like Phoenix level powers. Yep. I mean, he could like fly through the universe and all this other kind of stuff. So I, I think they do that. They realize that the person is you know omnipotent, omniscient. Mm -hmm. and let's ratchet him down a little bit. You know, you right. can't have everybody a god. You know, Big G. In sure. the comic, so they, they kind of ratchet all that stuff back. But I do think with the fact, I mean, and he's interfaced with other living organisms, yep. aliens that have come and, like, uh, you know, try to take over the planet. He's, you know, uh, integrated with them and different things like that. I think that, and, and DC doesn't have a Omega-level mutant classification. No, of course they don't. But I think that he could be that, because really... If you can absorb or connect to any technology, mm -hmm. you're pretty much unlimited, right? Correct. So if you can do that, you can build any kind of attachment or integrate any kind of system mm -hmm. into your cyborg body to become or do anything. Sure. And he's done some pretty amazing things. So yeah. I would classify him as an Omega level mutant on the DC side. Wow. Damn. Would um if you're looking at the Marvel side, it is a close I mean, from a look standpoint, you you think Iron Man, right? right. Would, would that be the closest thing Marvel has to a cyborg, or is there another character that pops out? Actually, the closest character on the Marvel side would be, from the look perspective, would be Cable. From the look? Okay. Yeah. What about um, as a character itself? As a character, set? I would say the power set would be an Iron Man. Okay, got right. it. Right. So we got we're we're gonna we're gonna do Iron Man versus Cyborg real quick. We're just <laughs> making this up as we go, Adrian. Okay. Uh, um, the the big question. Actually, we'll save that one for the end. Mm-hmm. Iron Man versus Cyborg from a look standpoint, who's got the cooler suit? Uh, 
I, it's not a suit, but I would say cyborg. Cyborg, yeah. okay. Or a cooler look, I guess. I mean, the cooler. I, Let's go with that. It's got the cooler look. I, it's a toss up for me, man. man. This is hard. Because it, it depends. Uh, because, you know, Iron Man goes through these iterations of sure. suits. He also has different suits for different reasons, yeah. right? We're talking about, look, man, you, you turn around, you look at that Iron Man right there. We'll go with that suit. What you want me to say is Iron Man. <laughs> um, no, I want and, you to and, say and, what you want to say. Um, the cooler look, I would, I, I would go with the cyborg. Okay. Yep. All right. Um, you're going with cyborg. I'd say Iron Man. Yep. Now, Power set. Iron Man, it's hard because he doesn't really have powers. Right. He creates suit that has powers. Mm -hmm. But if we're counting that as his powers, mm -hmm. who's got the cooler power set? Um, I would say Cyborg, cyborg. also. Cyborg. Yep. Okay. And then the final question. Iron Man, Cyborg, they show up at the street corner. They're mm -hmm. about to throw down. Who wins? 1v1. <clears throat> Um, cyborg. Cyborg. Because you gotta you gotta remember, um, cyborg has most all of his stuff on board. Yeah. And he can tap into now. If you talk about Iron Man plus, um, um, Jarvis. Yeah, yeah. And um, Technovore and all this. If Iron Man showed up with all of his armaments, and cyborg showed up showed up. As he is, which is with all of his armaments, yeah, it would be a battle. Mm. Um, it, it it would be hard. It would yeah. be hard. I mean that 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 would be a close matchup because uh, Technovore can do a lot of stuff. It could, yeah, I mean, it could f transform his suit on on the fly. Yeah, uh, Victor he can transform his body parts on the fly. Um, Victor can use you know the boom tube technology to create force fields. Mm -hmm. He can create. Shields that can um, encapsulate oxygen so he can fly in space. I it would it would be a fight, but who would win? Uh, I, I'm still gonna go with Cyborg. Cyborg, yeah, okay. that's hard for you because Iron Man's your he's your he's yeah. your guy, bro. He's your, yeah. your number one. Yeah, on the on the Marvel side, yeah, yeah. That's why you know we shoot him straight here. We're not gonna even though we, you know people say we're biased. You're not mm -hmm. biased because no. if you were biased, you would say Iron Man because yeah. he's your all time favorite character, right? He's number yep. one in your book. Yep. But apparently Cyborg. You know what's crazy, though? All the stuff about Cyborg. Even with all these things he has, mm -hmm. the Justice League could still or still would not defeat the X-Men. Isn't that crazy? I agree. Isn't that crazy? I agree. <laughs> but, no, this is awesome. Um, Specifically, the Magneto-led. Oh, God, no. It would be a I... wrap. Yeah. He'd, he'd take Cyborg and shove him up Superman's ass, you know? <laughs> Anyways, it, it would happen just like that. Uh, <laughs> Here we go yo, that, that, that conjures up some images, right? Yeah, just like that. I mean, my right. Magneto don't care, dude. He he dropped Asteroid M on the Wayne Manor. Like, come on. There you go. Stop. Um, anyways, <clears throat> um, but Cyborg, I think, really cool character. I think underrated, you yeah. know. And, and um, you know, the theme with Hidden Gem is usually someone who's not been portrayed properly on screen. Now, we've seen Cyborg's been in a lot of shit, right? right. Yeah, um, he has. He has. Now, the one that sticks out to me is the Justice League. I think it's Ray Fisher might be the actor who mm -hmm. plays him. Um, what did you? How'd you feel about his portrayal? Miscast. Really? Yeah. Wow. Well, well, what did he not do for you? Um, I, I would say it's more of how they depicted the cyborg body as okay. opposed to a miscast. I, I, I'll, I'll say it that way. Got it. Okay. I don't like. They tried to make his body like the bat wing or something, mm -hmm. something stealthy. Yeah. Um, it was just odd to look at at some point. Okay. Um, it you didn't like the look. No, no. Um, and therefore I think anybody that they would have, the human part would have made the, the way they designed the suit, mm -hmm. the, the, the body would have made anybody that they cast to me look odd. Got it. So I so I'm not so I take it I take back that he's he was it was a miscast. Okay. More so, um, a design aspect of you know the cyborg body. Got it. Okay. Um, you know what? That's a great segue. You say the word miscast, Adrian. We have mm -hmm. a, a little game we started to play here a couple actually last week called hit or miscast. Okay. okay. I'm gonna give you five comic book castings. And right. You're just gonna let us know if in your mind this is your opinion. Sure. You know, that's not right. Well, it's his opinion, so it can't be wrong. Like, right. it's his opinion. Um, you may not agree, but that's why we have another segment called Agree to Disagree. We're trying right. to educate the viewers, <laughs> okay? Um, so hit or miss cast. I'm going to give you five castings, and you're just going to simply say if they're a hit or a miss, all right? right? 
You ready? Get ready. Number one, Brie Larson is Captain Marvel. Miss. <laughs> um, two, Chris Evans is Human Torch. Miss. The Rock is Black Adam. Hit. Robert Pattinson is Batman. Hit. All right. Look at that, dude. You've come a long way, Adrian. Well, I mean, <laughs> because in my mind I have to separate. Um, there's there's a prime for every body, yep. uh, real or not, and there's a prime for every character. And I think um, the the middle aged Batman is his prime. Mm -hmm. So, but to see Pattinson come from come up and be like the early Batman, yeah. I think that's a I think is a Got hit. It. But I had to get out of the prime version of Batman into the younger version in, in order to accept right. Pattinson. Right. The prime being George Clooney. Or or, or we. Uh, absolutely not. <laughs> absolutely not. No. Um, you know, getting out of. But also, you have to think about. I'm also transitioning, Pattinson from Edward. Yeah, you're still stuck. You know what I'm saying. That. Yeah, he had that much of an impact in the Twilight series. I guess. Well, I've never. I had never seen him. Yeah. Before or after that, as any other person. True. So true. that's all. That's the only thing I had to go by him. All right. Um, Just like I still can't see that kid um, that played um, Harry Potter in anything. Oh yeah. Even though, he's been in a lot of sh movies though, dude. Yeah. Uh, but I, I can't. He's just Harry Potter to you. He's just Harry Potter. There's rumored to show up as, as um, I think it's Patch or Puck, the uh, Wolverine variant uh, with the patch on his eye. So we'll see. Or no, I'm, I'm sorry. It is Patch. I don't know. I'm screwing him up. We're not experts, like I told you all before. Wait a minute. Puck? Wait a minute. What? Not Puck. Patch. Patch in from, from what? Patch is a Wolverine alias where he has the patch on his eye. And oh, got it, got it, got it, got it. Got so it. that's rumored to happen in Deadpool and Wolverine. We'll see if it is um, Harry Potter. Okay. okay. <laughs> Last one, hit or miss. Vin Diesel is Groot. Um, anybody could have played Groot. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so it, it doesn't matter. That's what I would like, say a hit only yeah, because anybody could have played. Right. Like, are we we really gonna say like you know Vin Diesel did did a great job of saying I am Groot? Like, come on. I mean, literally. So that doesn't even pass the copyright laws, right? They could have, somebody could have, say, hey, Vin Diesel, Vin Diesel, say Groot. He would say Groot once they recorded it yeah. and use that to, for 15 movies, right? <laughs> right. Because that's literally all he said until yeah. he died and came back as a twig and started talking about other stuff. I think this falls under, like, you know, like abstract art. Like, like you could spill your coffee on this desk and be like, you know, the West spilt it, really embodies right. how I'm feeling at the time. And right, like, right, look right. at the way the, you know, the the coffee dried in here. And right. it's like, that's art. Oh, my God. Isn't that the Mona Lisa? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, <laughs> I feel like that's what we're doing when we say, like, Vin Diesel's great. Like, the way he, you know, it portrays the emotions of saying this, dude, it's the same shit every time. Let's knock it off. Groot. Yeah, I'm Groot. Groot. I'm Groot. I'm Groot. Groot. Like, we all can do it. We, we can do it. We do it on this podcast, and we can have a Groot segment where we just say I'm Groot over and over again with different fucking right, emotions. Right. And, you know, so, yeah. And then leave you to figure out what we're talking about and right. wrap your own emotions around yeah. I'm Groot. Right. But that's just, <laughs> as, as my man Eric from The Boys said, that's just my own perspective. Hey, day, but, um, yes, as Groot, Vin Diesel knocks it out of the park. Sure, sure. sure. All right. Um, Adrian, you have a rule. You made a comic book rule, mm -hmm. and I found out something that's crazy. For the most part, Hollywood has been abiding by your rule. Okay. Look at that. You say that there is a two character, a two comic character limit per comic actor. Correct. Correct. So I, I, I searched, I made a list, and I said, list everyone that has played more than one comic character. And would you believe that 99.99% of people that have played multiple characters have only played two? Nice. Isn't that something? So we have individuals like Chris Evans yep. who played Human Torch and Captain America. Mm -hmm. So what I wanted to find this week is I was just going to roll through these and you tell me if there's anyone that gets two thumbs up. Because I feel like what happens a lot of times, Chris Evans' Human Torch was not that good. Right, right. right? So they redeemed themselves. They redeemed themselves. Captain yep. America, great. Yep. Br Ryan Reynolds. Green Lantern. Yep. Boom. Deadpool. The second Deadpool. Amazing. Right. Now, I'm going to... Throw some at you, and you're going to let me know if any of them is a two thumbs up, okay? So, meaning that I agree with and like them as both, both characters. Yes. Got it. Yep. So, like, you have <clears throat> Ben Affleck's is a good example. Mm -hmm. No. He played Daredevil. No. You're going no. No. But Batman, you'd say yes. I, I would say better than better Daredevil. Than, okay. All right. Um, Tom Hardy, we know him as Venom. Yep. He also played Bane in The Dark Knight Rises. Would you say two thumbs up or no? 
No. No. I mean, either. Which one's the thumbs down or both? Both. Both. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I, I he was okay as Bane. And I, y'all know how I feel about his, you know, Eddie Brock. Um, let's see. Let's see. J.K. Simmons. Here's one. He's played J. Jonah Jameson mm-hmm. in a, a plethora of Spider-Man movies. Right. And he played Commissioner Gordon in the Justice League, which I thought he did a good. Yeah, I would say thumbs up on both of those. So he's the first one with two thumbs up, J.K. Right. Simmons. Okay. I mean, he was second on the list. So, <laughs> I mean, he's not like he, he, he's <laughs> oh, not I like skipped you over. Him, he's not like you said he, he said him at number 15 or something. Well, I'll, I'll tell you who I skipped over. Uh, Michael B. Jordan, Human Torch, and Eric Killmonger. That's uh, one thumbs up. Yep. Um, um, Halle Berry, Storm, and Catwoman. Two thumbs down. Two thumbs down. Yep. Um, Brandon Routh, he played Superman in Superman Returns, and he played Adam in the Arrowverse. Yeah. Uh, thumbs up, thumbs down. Yep. So I, I did. I skipped over a bunch. Okay. So, yeah, yeah, J.K. Simmons. Through. Now, here's another one. Yep. Josh Brolin, he plays Thanos and Cable. Okay. Two, two thumbs up. Two thumbs up. It also says he plays Jonah Hex in Jonah Hex. I don't even know who that yeah, is. That's actually a good movie. Um, okay. With uh, what's her face, um, the most gorgeous female in the universe at the time, um, Megan uh, Megan uh, Fox. Megan Fox. Yeah. Okay. All right. Now that's a com. I've never even heard of Jonah Hex. So technically, he's got three characters. Does that break the rule? It definitely breaks the rule. Wow. We're all three good. The, yeah. Wow. Excellent. So Josh Brolin's like a unicorn. Yep. Um, <laughs> we have now. Do you ever see the movies Kick Ass, Kick Ass, Kick Ass Two, with uh Nick Nick Cage? Uh, he's in one of them. Yeah. Who who's in one in one of them? Isn't Nick Cage in one of them or no? Yeah, he's in the first one. I um, I I I can't remember. I, Aaron Taylor Johnson's in that, um, which actually would put him at three when he plays Craven the Hunter. He played Quicksilver in Age of Ultron. Okay. He played Kick Ass and Kick Ass, and he's going to be playing Craven the Hunter. Is Kick Ass a real character? I guess. That's what it says here. I um Idris Elba, Heimdale yep. in the MCU. Mm-hmm. And then he played Bloodsport in the Suicide Squad movie. Um honorable mention in the first one and yeah. atrocious in the second one. Okay. Um, let's see. We we'll find oh, speaking of Nicolas Cage. Does this count as breaking your rule? He played Ghost Rider. Yep. He played Big Daddy in Kick Ass. Yep. And he plays or does the voice of Spider Man Noir in Into the Spider Verse. Does that count? Really? Mm. The voice does not. The okay. voice does not. But the fact that he made a cameo as Superman and and that's the, the other Flash, one too. Yeah. Right. Oh, does that so, count? So, but yeah. So that breaks the rule. Damn. So if he would have stuck to two, he would have been fine. <laughs> Um, David Harbour plays two characters. He played the second Hellboy. Remember the remake? Hellboy, yep. The one I guess didn't do so well. And he played the Red Guardian in Black Widow, which I thought he did a good job with the Red Guardian, the fat Captain America from Russia version. Yeah, yeah. Um, um, but Hellboy, that he got horrible reviews for that. Yeah. Michelle Pfeiffer, she's got, I think she's got two thumbs up. Catwoman. Mm-hmm. And then Janet Van Dyne. And Ant Man and Wasp. Did you like her, Janet? No. No. So no. you give her a thumbs down. Yeah. Um, let's see. Michael Keaton, Batman and Vulture. Two thumbs up. Um. Yeah, I give him two thumbs okay. up. Okay. So we got another one. You know what? We'll, we will pause there, Adrian. We can resume this. This will be an ongoing segment for a few sure, weeks. So sure. So today we found out that Jonah, or Jonah, <laughs> J.K. Simmons knocked it out of the park with Jonah Jameson. Yep. And Commissioner Gordon was pretty good. Um, the second one was Josh Brolin, Thanos and Cable, mm-hmm. right? Pretty good. And, or not pretty good, amazing. And then Michelle Pfeiffer, Catwoman, mm-hmm. Janet Van Dyne. Pretty solid across mm-hmm. the board. So there's a few out there that knocked them out of the park. Yeah, yeah. Speaking of Megan Fox. Okay. Look-wise, and actually I think, <clears throat> and I don't know exactly what happened to her after, you know, she got – Something happened during the Transformers mm-hmm. uh, movies where she got dismissed or she dismissed herself. Oh, yeah. I think she had an issue with um, Michael Bay. So he was a little creeper on set. I think in, during her audition, he made her, like, wash his car. Like, you know, like those little sexy car wash type thing. Yeah, it was, like, some weird shit. But little, little. You, you seen a boyfriend, though? Yeah, MGK. <laughs> yeah. I, 
Well, Eminem um, destroyed his career a couple years ago when he tried to diss Eminem. Oh, really? Yeah. You know what's funny? You hear about like all this woke stuff, like people being mm-hmm. offended. Eminem came out with a new song recently. Okay. Houdini, which it's for me. Like I'm an Eminem fan of like old school stuff. This mm-hmm. was. It felt like a toned down version of the old stuff. Okay. It's not horrible. I mm-hmm. wouldn't say it's amazing. Right. Definitely has me a little intrigued to see where this thing's going. But the the best part for me is seeing is seeing like some of these, I guess, Gen Zers online being all offended at some of the shit he's saying on this. And like some of us who actually remember the real Eminem are like, dude, this is nothing. Right. <laughs> the, what he said about Megan um, the Stallion getting shot in the feet is nothing compared to shit he used to say about Britney Spears right. and Sync, all these guys. So it's just funny to see how soft we continue to get. <laughs> exactly. So, so the Megan. Um, good. Or good. Fox. Fox. Yep. Um. So I think that she would have paid, played a good Wonder Woman mm, okay. uh, from the appearance perspective. Yeah, um, she's a bit fleshier yep. than um, uh, Gail Gadot. Yeah, uh, but she definitely has, I think, the face of the classic of of the Wonder Woman that we see in the comics. Okay, that was my only point. There you go. All right. Well, um, moving on from hit or miss cast. Um, I'm sorry. I'm backtracking here. Moving on from our two character limit. You know, okay. We're yep. fleshing out the rules here, Adrian. That's what it is. You know, because <laughs> someone also asked online, "Does Michael Keaton playing Birdman? You ever seen that movie Birdman? He did. Um, I've never really watched it. It's like he plays like an actor. He basically plays a version of himself at the time. He's an actor who is in these Birdman movies, which is kind of like Batman, and he's older. And um, basically, I-, I guess he ends up getting the powers of the Birdman in real life. I don't know. This is, again, a movie being explained really badly because I've not seen the whole thing. Okay. But the question was, does that count? And I'm saying no. Birdman doesn't count as a comic character, right? Michael Keaton is, is, is Birdman a comic character? I don't. Or the version that he played? Is that Maybe a, it's one of those, like, in the movie it's a comic character or something. And anyone who's actually seen this movie, feel free to correct us. Right, right. We don't know. So I guess as of right now, we're going to go undecided. Right. There you go. <laughs> um, so something hit me the other day, right? Mm-hmm. When I say the term suspension of disbelief, you ever heard that? I have. What does that mean to you? Um, I am, I, I used to believe something and now I, based on the information that I currently have, mm. I might not so much believe what I originally believed. Okay. Well, nope, that's not what it means. Okay. So suspension of disbelief is something, um, Basically what it means, it, it, it plays into watching movies, reading comics, mm-hmm. pro wrestling, things like that. Kind of like accepting, suspending your disbelief. So like if I told you, Adrian, I know a guy who can grab a hammer like this, mm-hmm. conjure up some lightning and zap people. Mm-hmm. If I told you that, like I'm being serious, you'd think I'm fucking crazy, right? Right. But if we're watching a movie, you know that can't really happen, but you're going to suspend your disbelief. And you're going to accept that what I, it. Isn't that what, what I just said? I don't know. I don't, that's, that's not what that's, I got that's from. That's what I said. Okay. <laughs> it's exactly what you said. It wasn't exactly what I said, but I, I had a belief. Yeah. And based on some new information, I now am sus, suspending okay. that previous okay. belief. All right. Man, okay, you know, 50-50 maybe. <laughs> um, but, but it's used a lot in like fantasy, right? Sure. Like I'm going to suspend my discipline, like pro wrestling. Right. I know they're not really fighting. I'm not, like I love when people tell you that. Like, you know, um, did you know, it's fake, right? I'm like, no shit, really? Right. Wait, so he just hit him with a chair and, and dropped him on his head. And, oh, he shouldn't be able to walk out of the match after that? No, right. I had no fucking idea. Thank you, genius. <laughs> um, you know, but while I'm watching it, I'm going to suspend my disbelief. And I'm going to get into this, sure. like, I'm watching this match. And he's weak now because he got hit. Like, right. just like when you're watching Spider-Man zip through Manhattan on TV. You're, in your mind, you're, you're not going. Like, you suspend the whole... Well, this is a movie. It's Tom Holland. They're CGI. You're right, going, that's right. Spider-Man. Oh, shit, Spider-Man's hurt. Is he going to get out of this? Who knows, right? Yeah, so gotcha, suspension gotcha. of disbelief. Now, there's, as, um, as me being me, there's some things where it's hard to suspend the disbelief when it's maybe just plain stupidity. <laughs> so I have a question for you. Is this... I'm going to lay out a scenario, and you're going to tell me if you think this is just stupidity that we let slide or if it's suspension of disbelief. So, Rogue. Okay. We know about her mutant powers, right? Mm -hmm. She can't touch anyone. Right. 
And, and, I, and this hit me because I was rewatching some X Men ninety seven episodes. <clears throat> And I, I think that my favorite episode or the best episode of the show may be Remember It, When Gambit Dies, The Sacrifice. Like yep. the, That was just an amazing episode. Yep. The, Which, the whole attack on, Gen, on yeah. the new Genosha or yep. something. Yep. The only thing we should do, do next week is we don't have, we had a couple of weeks before Deadpool Wolverine comes out. Mm -hmm. we, we should go back in time <clears throat> and revisit, because we scored X-Men 97 as it was going one episode at a time. Right. We should look at this thing as a whole, revisit our scores, and rank the episodes. Okay. We'll do that next week. Rank the episodes against each other? Yep. Okay. Best episode to worst episode. Got it. Right? I already know the worst episode. Okay. The video game one. Yep. yep. There's no yeah. way. Yeah. Now, as of right now, I'm thinking, remember, it may be the best. I don't know. Okay. But there are some really good ones towards the end. <clears throat> remember, you know, her, her whole, like that, remember? See, I did that. Tied it in. Right. Remember it. Yep. You know, it's just, it's what All we right. do. It's, dude, it's easy. You know, this <laughs> comes easy. Um. But if you remember in the episode, there's this <laughs> dynamic between Rogue, Gambit, and Magneto. Right. Magneto wants her to be his queen. Magneto's the one individual that she can actually touch because of his powers. Mm -hmm. She, Gambit has his thing for her. She does too, but then tries to act like she doesn't and then realizes that she still does, right? But mm -hmm. she can't touch Gambit. Gambit sacrifices himself. Now she's touching him. She can't feel him, the whole deal. Right. In X Men, in every just about every X Men story, comic book, on screen, there's a collar that you can put on, right? And it suppresses your mutant powers. Mm -hmm. Why wouldn't Rogue just get herself one of these collars on whatever, maybe eBay or something? I don't know where you buy, them. <laughs> steal them from one of these guys, strap it on her arm, go on a date with Gambit, do her thing, whatever she wants, and then just take it off when it's time to use her powers. Is that, or is this just where I'm supposed to spend my disbelief and think that they never thought about that? Um, for the same reason that Xavier doesn't take the uh, claustrophobia out of uh, Storm. Right. For that reason. Okay. So it's just stupidity that we let slide. Exactly. So that's not suspension of disbelief. That's right. stupidity that we let slide. Yes. Got it. Because there's a little bit of a difference. Oh, yeah. Or maybe there isn't. So y'all let us know how you feel. Is it stupid that Rogue just doesn't pick up one of these little bracelets, learn how to undo? I mean, you got Beast who can undo the shit. Like, he can right. make it, right? Yep. Why wouldn't she just strap it on? Make a nice little stylish fetching bracelet. Right, right. Put an on-off switch on it. Exactly. Something, you any, go. Anything, you anything. know? And you can hold hands with whoever you exactly. choose. Exactly. And then, yo, shit's about to pop off. You just, all right, mm. here we go. Ready. You exactly, know, powers exactly. Engaged, so. Imagine she walk into a preschool, dude, with all the kids want to clamber all over. Absolutely. She would, like, just kill everybody yeah. in, the, in the preschool, right? Or she could go, hold on, switch it. You know, like your iPhones, you do the do not disturb thing. The exactly. Switch exactly. one of those. Or uh, she probably should do it in, in the car before she actually gets out. <laughs> I'm just saying. Yeah, not as the kids are running at her. <laughs> right. Hold on. But anyway, so y'all let us know. Is that stupidity that we let slide, or is it just falls under suspension of disbelief? Right, right. Um, Smoking Dragon on um, TikTok says, prove me wrong here. So we're talking about the sequels, but the one franchise that should have stopped a while ago was the Fast and the Furious. <laughs> yeah. You think they should have stopped? <laughs> I think they should have yeah. stopped. But, let me, okay. You I say mean, that. I also think The Walking Dead should have stopped too. True. But, I mean, what, what's going to happen is Fast and Furious is going to stop, and then they're going to sp split off into something else. <laughs> you know, Fast and Furious at night or something. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> the Midnight Suns. <laughs> <laughs> now, that being said, though, are you going to go watch the next Fast and Furious movie when it comes out? Uh, of course. Gil right. Gil 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 Gadot's come back, right? Yes. With the, with the Triton sub or whatever the hell that was. <laughs> that, that's, it's kind of like you just can't look away at this point. Exactly. Right? He's like, it's like, oh, my God, the sun is burning my eyeballs out, yep. but I can't. Exactly. Like, we, we've been here for this long, and we're just going right. to be here for the rest of the ride. Right. Um, I mean, how many more bridges can they jump over <laughs> and land on the hood <laughs> safely, you know, yeah, I, with a three-year-old? Who knows? All right. Well, I think it's about that time, Adrian, to wrap up That's it. with a little agree to disagree. Take this thing home. Okay. Let's so I got I got seven this week. All right. All right. And um, I got some. You know what's um, and I'm just gonna kind of give you give you a piece of news that kind of sparked one of these for me. You a soda right. drinker? Sure. What's your favorite soda? Coke. You know, Coke's the number one soda in the world, right? Like, top selling soda. You know what number two is? Water. Pepsi. Pepsi? No soda. No. I, I know. <laughs> you know what the, the top two words in the world are? No. Um, I think it's like yes and Coke. Really? Yeah. Is that a true statement? You just I, it up. I, I heard that some time ago. Okay. Like wow. you're looking at all the languages. What yeah. do everybody understands? Yeah. 
Yes, and Coke. Wow. I'm, I could be wrong. Somebody, I, you know what? It's so nonsensical. I don't care. You don't have to correct me. But that was just some okay. tri- from some old school trivia. Wow. All right. Well, yeah. You got. You know. You guys fact check that. I guess. Well, I say that to just. That's. I'm gonna leave it at that. There is one of my <laughs> agree and disagrees that I'm gonna come back to and explain why I even brought you that piece of news because number two had always been Pepsi. Okay. And there's a new number two in town. Okay. So, all right. You ready for agree to disagree? Um. I'm curious. Yes. You now you're curious. Look at right. that. See, um, this is where I rapid fire a handful of my statements that are my opinions at Adrian. Mm-hmm. A lot of these hit me over the weekend, last week, sometimes this morning, sometimes while we're doing the show. Okay. okay. So, um, and Ad- Adrian is going to let me know if he agrees or disagrees. And then when we stop, you guys will do the same. Yep. And that's where the real fun starts. Okay. So, number one, Captain America Civil War is better than the first two Avengers movies. Agree. All right. Look at that. Number two, Infinity War is the best Avengers movie. I agree. It's time for Sony to give the Spider-Man live action <laughs> movie rights back to Marvel Studios. I agree. Venom 3 will be the worst of the Venom trilogy. Haven't seen it. I can't say that. It's my predi- It's a prediction. But because so I'm, I'm on the fence, I'll lean to, dis- uh, to agree. Okay. And number five, Dr. Pepper is better than Coke. I do Disagree. All right. And that's the new number who, two, who, by the way. Really? Yeah. Doctor. Dude, wow. knock your pepper, knock Pepsi. It smacked it smacked Doctor. I mean it smacked Pepsi like Dana Wife smacked his wife. Same thing. Now, I actually I remember Dr. Pepper. Yep. Um, I wouldn't even I I I don't like Pepsi. I'll drink it if there's not a Coke and I must have some kind of cola. Yeah. But I never went to a Dr. Pepper. Wow. So you're like an anti Pepsi guy. I it just it's it's a different taste. Yeah. Um, but for Dr. Pepper to knock it out, yep. I mean, you, you, that doesn't mean that Dr. Pepper is better. That means that Pepsi just did a bad job <laughs> over like the last decade marketing. Yep. Well, I, I think that, Dr. Pepper's now. I'm not a soda drinker, so right? you know, full transparency. Uh-huh. I'm not a huge soda drinker, but in those cases, like you know, the the trip to McDonald's here and there, yeah, I'm getting a Dr. Pepper. Those are probably really? the only times I drink Dr. Pepper. Yeah. Yep. You know how we talked about um, last week or previous week how there's certain things. Your mind just blocks out certain mm-hmm. things. My mind just block. I don't even see Dr. Pepper on the <laughs> menu, dude. Seriously. Yes, I don't you, even. You, no. The fountain little the label doesn't even pop up you for know, you. Wow. I, see, I see Coke and mm-hmm. lemonade. There you go. And, and, and uh, uh, shake. Okay. That's it. Well, you got a new king in town, dude. And guess what? Coke, you're next. Dr. Pepper's coming. <laughs> <laughs> Coke, don't worry about it. Um, number six. The Fast and Furious franchise peaked at Fast Five. It peaked at one. <laughs> at one? <laughs> I'll give it three. Okay. I Five is, I disagree. Okay. I, I think it peaked earlier. And then last but not least, there are too many geniuses in comics. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, there's never enough geniuses. There's too many unapplied geniuses. Okay. Like, like the uncle in... Um, <laughs> Um, oh, uh, Blue Beetle. Blue Beetle. Yep. I mean, you're losing your house. You got a eight hundred thousand dollar truck, and you can fly spaceships. Yeah. But you're losing your house. Okay. We don't think there's I, too many genius level characters in comics. Um, why why do you make this statement? So when you said earlier, you were talking about um in the Victor Stone, Victor Stone, yeah, genius level, and I'm yep. like, dude, you know how many times I've heard that about a character? But it's unapplied though. Okay. I don't so in this case I don't even know why they said it. Just like they make T'Challa a genius level. Why? Right, we never. You know, his it. sister is a genius level into sure. because she uses it. Yeah. So that's why I have the statement. There's too many unapplied. Okay. Gen- you know, um, Von, uh, Victor Von Doom, uh, 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 Tony Stark, Reed Richards. Yep. They these are genius level intellects that actually use their shit day to day. Correct. You know, um, so. In the broad statement, yes, there are too many genius levels, but mm-hmm. I don't think that there is such a thing as too many genius levels. I think there's too many unused mm-hmm. um, genius level intellects. Right. And I think it's because they overuse that, like, they, they're making a character, right? They're like, right. we're going to do super strength, this, that, and, oh, I got it, genius level. Okay, right. cool, another one. Oh, we're going to make a villain. He's a, Oh, make him a genius. Okay, cool. Right, right. Why does everybody have to be genius level? Why can't we have some dumbass superhero, you know? Well, we do. Superman. <laughs> um, but do you think there are too many Omega-level mutants? No. 
No. Why not? Well, there's only like 20. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, okay. we went through the most of the list, so yeah, I think there's only like twenty of them. Okay, so how many genius level intellect people are there? There aren't a, there aren't Ooh, a lot of them. You know what? We're gonna find out next week. Mm. I'm gonna do some research. I'm gonna come back next week with a list of all the genius level intellect comic characters, and I guess you can let me know which one. Would you say they're on? Um, what, what was the term you just used? They're unused or unapplied on Un- unapplied genius love and yeah, yeah. look at that he's come up with segments like this. because peter park is supposed to be a genius love he intellect, is, yeah. but he doesn't use it on his day-to-day no right? you know because i mean in the um uh, the new spider-man and stuff all of his tech comes from tony correct right he supposedly created his original originally he created his own his spider suit, suit that he wore yeah. and and um the the web slingers mm-hmm. and all the other stuff so but then then he goes to um oscorp he understands all of that stuff. True. So he's supposed to be a genius level intellect unused. Mm. So of the three live action Spider Man, mm-hmm. Garfield, Holland, and Maguire, who was shown more as a genius in their movies? So Maguire? Maguire. Yeah. Um Garfield was like a dumb dumb <laughs> and um Holland got all of his tech from Tony. Yeah. So he was just like a kid with the powers right. and got his tech right. from somewhere else, which, you know. Well, dude, this is you know how good we are here on this show. So we already got a segment for next week, brand new segment. We're going to go through genius level sure. intellect characters, and Adrian's going to let us know <laughs> if they have been, I keep forgetting the word, um, not fulfilled, um, applied. Unapplied. Unapplied. Unapplied geniuses next week on Only Comics. There we go. Look at that, dude. A little self-promo. <laughs> well, that wraps up Agree to Disagree. This is where y'all can now sound off. Let us know if you agree or disagree with me. I think the couple you disagreed with were the um, Dr. Pepper. You don't mm-hmm. think it's better than Coke? You thought Fast and Furious peaked a lot earlier than five. Yep. Um, and you don't think there's too many geniuses. You just think they're unapplied. Correct. Got it. All right. Well, there you have it. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for coming in, Adrian. Another yep. another week of fun with Mike and Adrian. Yep, that's it. Just another yep. week with Mike and Adrian. That's it. <laughs> they got to see me lift Moynier. Uh, I am I, worthy. I, I, Were you shocked? I was, I, I, I was not. No, you, you you're, you're awesome. You're an awesome guy. <laughs> so, of course, you can lift it. Of course. <laughs> now, next week, we'll find out if Adrian can lift it. I... I won't even attempt. Oh, okay. Ooh, it's going to remain no, a mystery. Man, that's it. All right. I cool. can lift lift that, that fetching uh, Magneto helmet. <laughs> of course, yes. This fetching helmet right here, which you cannot get on OnlyComicsMerch.com. But what you could do, you can get this shirt, you can get this hat. Right. Your hat looks like you were you know, gifted a gift from OnlyComicsMerch.com. Oh, uh, that's what we do, gift that, things, right? Absolutely. There you go. It's, it's not as tasty as the tequila you gave me a few weeks ago. But um, <laughs> anyways, well, we appreciate you guys joining us. Sound off. Drop some comments. God in mode. Give us some more, you know, give it just give us another list for next week. Right, I don't know. Right. Um, but appreciate all y'all. Hit the subscribe button if you've not already. Like this, share this, give this as a gift to someone that you love, or maybe someone you hate. Maybe you hate a, you think we suck so bad. Give it to someone you hate. I don't right, know. Right. But either way, sure. Or maybe you want to turn around somebody you hate so much by giving Ooh, them the gift of only comments. That's a great way to make a new friend. There you, you know? go. So anyway, if you were a true genius, you would share this with everyone. That, just saying. That's all right. That's well, right. Adrian, thanks for coming out. Absolutely. Guys. Thanks for joining us. You know where to find us every week right here on Only Comics. We'll see you next week.